one taken advantage of. Damn it. She was too slow to act. That Monica was a bitch. A damn bitch. Why did it have to be her? Why, among all the people, it had to be her? Were the riches and luxury within her fingertips going to be snatched away before her eyes? Mark gazed at her pitiful appearance, and his heart squeezed with pain, as though it was being shredded to pieces. No man could resist a weak and helpless woman. Mark, help me, Gracia pleaded. Looking fragile and weak, she leaned on his chest, and her hot tears made his clothes wet. I can't let that child return to the Lewis family. Mark, I know you like me. This is the last time. Won't you help me, please? Gracia spoke in a tearful voice, each of her words hitting his heart hard. His heart skipped a beat. He looked at her in disbelief. She actually knew? She was his university course mate for four years. Her tenderness, beauty, pride, and confidence were the most beautiful things he had always yearned to see. He loved her from the bottom of his heart, but he had never once let it show. This was because, from the very start, he had always known that she was an unattainable dream in his life. He was so insignificant, he did not dare confess to her. He was contented with just observing her from afar. After graduation, he entered Makewell Financial Group and became Stefan's personal assistant. Only then did he realize that the man in her heart was like a god. Gracia. Just this once. This is the very last time. If you promise to help me, I will do anything you request of me in the future. She begged earnestly once more. From his furrowed brows, one could tell that he was struggling inside. Gracia gritted her teeth. Her hands latched onto his shoulders. She tiptoed and pressed her lips onto his. Shocked, Mark's body became as stiff as stone. Her lips onto his. She asked with a hint of seduction. It's enough. Gracia, help me. Hold me. She smacked her lips with hers again. Her seaweed-like hair was tangled in a mess as she leaned her seductive figure onto his chest. Gracia's dainty frame stretched out enchantingly. It was extremely fascinating and charming. On a regular basis, she cared for her body exceedingly. She was blessed with good looks and a hot body. A normal man's heart would thump erratically just by looking at her. Mark was unable to resist her poison any longer and completely fell into her deadly yet gentle trap. He let himself go and indulge. Closing his eyes and following his heart, he clutched her shoulders and went down along her back. An inappropriate scene secretly played out in the assistant's office. What the two in indulgence did not know was that a mini pinhole camera was in a hidden corner of the ceiling. Martin sent Monica home later that evening. Knowing that she did not own a proper dress for tomorrow's party, he spent a huge sum to gift her one. She was embarrassed to accept it at first, but he smiled at her and told her that she was treating him too much like an outsider. Silly girl. Tomorrow is a party, breaking new grounds for Foxcom Entertainment. Many first-class producers and directors for movie festivals will be there. Don't tell me that you, as my female partner, will be in a school uniform at the venue. Her wits were muddled by his words. All right, don't stand on ceremony with me. If you succeed in signing the contract, just remember to treat me to a meal. He presented her with a condition. She readily agreed. Before leaving, he suddenly planted a soft kiss on her forehead. Monica... Good luck. It was already eight at night when Monica made it to the Thames' house to fetch Andres. She already informed Matthew of this beforehand, but the air in the living room remained somber when she arrived. Noticing her return, Rosie hurriedly approached Monica. Have you seen your sister? She's still not back yet. I'm worried sick. Why would I know where she is? She showed puzzlement. She did see Emma today 
But why should she explain herself to her? She could not be bothered to report anything to Rosie. Matthew saw that Monica was home and quickly inquired after her well-being, which earned him his wife's pointed stare. She looked at Monica once more. She was reminded of her daughter who had yet to return home and immediately exploded in anger. Matthew, what a good father you are! You're so concerned for this wild straw, yet you don't even ask about your daughter who isn't home yet. Hearing this, he turned livid. Who did you say is a wild straw? I'm also worried that Emma isn't home yet. What are you on about? The two started arguing back and forth. Monica, who was unwilling to get involved in their fight, calmly headed to her room. However, she was stopped midway by Rosie's bellow. Stop right there! Monica looked over her shoulder and asked in a lukewarm manner, May I help you? Rosie noticed the exquisite paper bag in her hand. Armani. Years of frequenting the shopping malls, she naturally knew this international brand. She almost pissed it with her stare. How did Monica get a hold of such an expensive item? Where did you get that from? Why do you care? After she asked that, Monica faced forward and continued walking to her room without a backward glance. Rosie's head nearly burst in anger. That wild bitch was becoming more and more disrespectful to her nowadays. What? For money? It was a cheap imitation of the real thing. It suddenly poured that night. Monica then decided to sleep over at the Thames house and went to bed early with Andres. At midnight, Streaks of lightning and roars of thunder started accompanying the unexpected downpour outside. Since Emma was still not home by then, the worried couple decided to file a missing person report at the police station. She were about to rush to the station when they were alerted by a strange noise beyond the door. They hurried over and found Emma leaning on the door in a vain manner. They did not know how long she had been standing outside for her hair was soaking wet, her clothes was disheveled, and her face was strangely flushed. Mom? She tremblingly called out. She sounded as if she had experienced a huge chagrin. A trail of clear tears rolled down her cheeks thereafter. Rosie felt as if a knife had missed her heart. What happened, Emma? Come in first. Emma was helped into the living room. She rested her weight against the chair weakly. Pearl-like tears rolled down her face unabatedly. Rosie looked at her daughter, heartbroken. With a tense expression, she inquired, Emma, what happened to you? Tell me, who bullied you? Emma continued sobbing in tears, but remained unforthcoming. Now, she absolutely regretted it. Charlie appeared to be a dignified gentleman, but he was actually a beast in disguise. A beast among beasts. Charlie had brought her into a private room this afternoon. She originally thought that she had attached herself to a huge tree and was very pleased with herself. If she could please him, she might be able to make a grand entrance into the show business. Thereafter, Miss Director, she knew Miss Director, saw this flops, and were not highly acclaimed. They were often hot topics. Episode 62, Emma's Coveting. If she could have such a powerful backer, her acting career would be smooth sailing. Emma naively thought that Charlie brought her along to meet with other producers. He had wide connections, after all. Little did she know that she was being led into a wolf's den of extravagant orgy. All she wanted to do now was forget what happened earlier tonight. She only remembered him handing over an invitation card before asking someone to send her home. He nibbled at her ear as he said, I heard Martin Lee had invited your sister to Foxcom Annual Gala tomorrow. You come. A strange smile appeared on his face when he issued this invitation. You and your sister shall treat me well tomorrow. 
Don't worry. I'll give you benefits. He could hardly contain his excitement inside. Just imagining that intimate scene of both sisters riding him. No words could express the feeling. Emma held her disgust and indignation and managed to keep her smile up. She would rather not be together with Monica. If things took a wrong turn and the man shifted his support from her to Monica, what could she do then? She was like a slave today, catering to the whims of every boss with a smile. She was shamed so thoroughly, but in the end, she was unwilling to throw the health after the hatchet. She acted coyly. I hate that. Mr. Charlie, am I not enough for you? Don't worry, sweetheart. You're very attractive. So I, of course, love you the most. Rest assured, I won't love anyone else. With his promise, she felt more at ease. Rosie naturally did not know what she had gone through. Studying her despondent face, she hesitantly asked, Darling, have you auditioned? Matthew's head jolted in shock at that. You said she had gone to audition again? Rosie realized her slip of the tongue and bit her lower lip. He was very angry and felt somewhat exasperated that his daughter could not live up to his expectations. I provided you with a good education, but you persisted in becoming an actress? Is our family not capable of feeding you fully and dressing you warmly? Why do you insist on degrading yourself like that? As soon as the word degrade reached her ears, Emma sobbed in indignation and shouted, Dad! Sis also went to the audition, but why didn't you scold her? What? Rosie gasped in shock. She auditioned too? How could that be possible? He defended Monica and said, Your sister always behaves properly. She won't go into a place like the entertainment industry. Dad, you never believe me. Since you don't believe me, you can ask her yourself. Not only did she take part in the audition, she even passed it. Today, I saw her in a Rolls Royce. I don't know what tactics she used, but she probably hooked up with a boss or something. Smack! Emma's face turned to the side from the fierce slap. She cradled her face and looked at her father in horror. Her heart broke into pieces. Dad, you hit me! Disappointment was written all over his face. Emma, how could you speak of Monica like that? She is your sister. How does she usually treat you? She lets you have delicious food and all the good things. But what about you? You're talking behind her back. What about hooking up with a big boss? Monica's not that kind of person. Why? Why is it okay for her to participate in the audition, but not me? Am I still your biological daughter? She yelled at him in exasperation. He was stumped and watched her run to her room. Only he and his wife were left in the living room, and the latter was looking at him with cold eyes. On a certain day, the early morning sun shone brightly. Andres got up early and kicked Monica from the bed. Mommy, wake up! Andres shook her awake. Today is a special day. Get up and exercise to prepare for tonight's gala. Monica was shocked. Darling, how do you know that Mommy is attending a gala tonight? He gave her a dull look. I even know that you're the female partner that Martin Lee has invited. She was baffled. How does Andres know? Andres helplessly held up his forehead. How could he let his dumb mother know that this was all part of his plan? Anyway, go work and earn money to feed the family. Andres' future wife depends on mother. He knew how tedious work in the entertainment industry could be. Everything was glamorous and beautiful on the surface, but few people knew of the tough work stars did behind closed doors. Therefore, he had to put more effort into monitoring his precious mommy and make sure that she had enough strength for the tough work ahead. Oh, no, Andres, please don't marry someone. Instead, take care of mommy forever. Monica tightly hugged her son as the latter's face darkened. The mother-son pair changed into a set of comfortable clothes and went for a morning jog of a few kilometers. 
Fox Com Entertainment Annual Gala will be held at 7 tonight. After experiencing yesterday's mess, Emma was in total discomfort. When she woke up, no one was home. It was empty and void. Feeling hungry, she checked the fridge for something to eat. When she passed by Monica's room, she came to a halt and looked at the door. Something was gnawing at her heart. She really wanted to know what good stuff was in that exquisite paper bag of Monica's. Yesterday, her mother mentioned seeing Monica carry an exquisite paper bag into the house. She then recalled Charlie saying that Martin had invited her sister to Foxcom Entertainment's yearly gala as his female partner. After hearing that, Emma's heart was filled with resentment. She regarded Martin as a person as noble as the gods. How could Monica, a wild bitch from nowhere, be worthy of being his female partner? The longer she thought of it, the stronger the fire of jealousy in her heart raged. How could Monica, that vixen incarnate or something, gain the favor of so many producers and directors without doing anything, while she had to work hard and give up so many things just for a chance to participate in tonight's gala? She's nothing more than a disposable toy for the upper echelons of the entertainment industry. After they are tired of her, they'll throw her away. Currying favor with them? Dream on. Emma walked to her door and turned the doorknob. It was actually unlocked. <laughs> that idiot. She's unguarded as always. With that mocking thought, she openly strutted into the room. Monica's room was tidy and free of any clutter. The bed sheets were smoothened and the blankets were neatly folded. And the pillows were properly stacked together. Her desk was also organized. One could even catch a whiff of a clean and pleasant smell in the room. This fragrance was so inherent to Monica's. She had this refreshing smell since young. So whenever there was a family get-together during the New Year's, many uncles would compete for a chance to cuddle her and get a whiff of that fragrance. Therefore, Rosie disliked her when she was young and insisted that she was a vixen spirit incarnate with a bewitching scent. Episode 63, A Jealous Heart Emma stood before the study desk and opened the drawers. There were textbooks and notes, a few writing pens and erasers, and a family photo with her father. She dug deeper and found some revision textbooks and exercise booklets. This was when she flared up, muttering, squirm. She searched further, but only found books and stationaries. She turned to aim for the shabby wardrobe instead. There were only some old clothes hanging inside, faded from too much washing. This was why she easily spotted the exquisite carrier. Armani. It was Armani. She took out the carrier. It contained an elegant and luxurious evening gown. Oh, God. It was the latest design from Armani's summer series. She frequented the shopping malls so she was familiar with this expensive brand. She loved dressing up, but dresses like this were so costly that her mother refused to buy her any. Looking at her sister's evening gown, she wondered who could have bought it. Emma had once seen this dress being modeled in a fashion show on TV, and she really liked it. However, the $1,500 price tag scared her. How could her adoptive sister get a hold of the gown she wanted. Her heart was distorted by a surge of senseless jealousy. In what way does she deserve nice treatment and admiration from the directors and to receive such expensive and beautiful clothes? She was abandoned. Nobody wanted her. Her father adopted and treated her well. He had not cared for his biological daughter the way he cared for Monica since they were young. Bitch snatched away my father's love from me. Emma could bear it no longer. She took out the dress and put it on before the mirror. Her lips curved into a smile when she saw herself 
wearing the beautiful gown in the mirror. She twirled a few rounds, and her heart soared with happiness. Her adoptive sister did not deserve such nice clothes. Only she deserved them. Monica was Cinderella, while she was a real princess. The dress came at the right time, too. She was worried she would not have a decent gown to wear at tonight's gala. She carefully folded the dress and chanced upon a small, exquisite box hidden in a corner of the wardrobe. It looked like a jewelry box. Out of curiosity, she reached out for it and carefully removed the cover. Something dazzling flashed within her sight. She followed jewelry trends closely and knew that this was the unique collection from Harry Winston. The undisputed name in the world of diamonds tops the list of five most expensive jewelry brands in the world. Emma was astounded by the beautiful and dazzling sapphire necklace. It seemed to be chained and connected by countless small diamonds, giving off a cool and noble impression. It was so beautiful. So beautiful. This necklace should cost a fortune. How did her adopted sister get her hands on such expensive jewelry? It would be a waste on her. Another bout of jealousy gripped her heart. Why was it her again? Why was she given such a beautiful necklace? Why was she always so lucky? Emma bit her lower lip as she clenched the jewelry box with a trembling hand. She could not bear to put it down. She knew very well that she should not take the necklace. Her adoptive sister would find out sooner or later. Staring at the sparkling sapphire necklace, she took a deep breath, paused for a while, and eventually made up her mind. With the box clenched tightly in her palm, she hastily fixed the wardrobe as how it should originally be and dashed out of the room. She headed straight to her bedroom and panted nervously, feeling guilty. Her pounding heart only managed to calm down after she had stashed the necklace in her drawer. She tried to console herself. Her adoptive sister was not wearing it anyway, so she might as well take it. Even if Monica saw her with the necklace, her adoptive sister could not prove that it belonged to her. After all, there were so many of this kind in the world. She would simply insist that this was hers. She could say that she had bought an identical necklace like Monica's. Anyway... She just wanted to have this necklace. When she attended the gala tonight, she would wow the crowd. Afterward, she would no longer need to play second fiddle to her adoptive sister. She was, nonetheless, ridden with guilt because of her deed. So she quickly packed the things she stole and left after giving Charlie a call. Monica returned to her room after the morning run intending to get ready for the reception later that night. She was shocked to find the room in a mess. The gown and necklace she had prepared for tonight's event were missing. She panicked momentarily. Andres was equally alarmed and suspected a thief until he saw Emma's earring on the floor. His heart sank when he realized who the culprit was. The room did not have a proper lock to hide valuables. He had initially thought that Emma would be wiser by now. Instead, she only became more brazen. Monica's phone screen lit up with an unfamiliar number, so she picked up the call after some hesitation. Hello? Monica, are you at your house? Martin's warm and polite voice came through. Um, yes. Uh, we have a little sticky situation at hand. She rubbed her chin in frustration. Taking another look at her room, she sighed in resignation. I'm very sorry. I don't think I can attend tonight's gala with you. What's the matter? For some reason, Martin felt disappointed upon knowing that she would be unable to attend tonight's gala. He had been in a good mood since morning and was looking forward to it. What happened? She told him the situation. The gown, I'm not sure how, but it is missing. Along with the necklace you borrowed. Lost? I'm not sure. The room was in a mess when I got home. I forgot to lock the door. Martin sighed in relief at that. Oh, I thought something major happened. His agent, Drake, who was standing next to him, cried in frustration. What? God, that necklace is the one and only precious gem from Harry Winston. 
How could she lose that? Episode 64 Star Story Romance What? My god! That necklace is the one and only precious gem from Harry Winston! How could she lose that? That necklace did not come easy. He had borrowed it from the director behind the president's back. If this were to be found out by his boss, he would end up in dire straits. Forget it. Let her come over first. It's still early, so we can go over to the showroom to select another gown. Drake had a plan. Martin's extended Bentley parked at the entrance to the Thames house. The expensive car drew much attention from the residents in the neighborhood. This was a poor residential area, so the people in it had not seen such a luxury car before. It quickly gathered in one corner, gesticulating animatedly as they enviously observed. Monica quickly got into the car, and it was soon on its way. As they watched the car drive off, the neighbors started whispering to one another, isn't that the child from the Thames family? Yes, it's Monica. It's heard. She's Matthew's illegitimate daughter. Illegitimate child? It's heard that she is the child he had with his first wife. Who can confirm if she's truly his daughter? In what way does she look like Matthew? Thames probably got cuckolded in the past and still helped others raise the bastard child. The Bentley raced all the way up to the capital's busiest shopping mall. Armani, a luxury fashion shop, patronized by the socialites and movie stars in the capital. The store was lavishly decorated. From New York Fashion Week's top handmade dresses to Italy's range of luxury brands, it was the capital's most well-known go-to fashion shop. Not just anybody could enter the shop. And third-rate actresses would certainly not have the privilege of stepping through its doors. This was precisely why, when Drake handed Monica over to the styling director, who only served superstars, Zoe looked slightly sluggish. Agent Drake, what is this? Zoe, this is Martin's companion. Drake explained with a smile, the expression in his eyes self-evident. Zoe naturally understood what Drake was getting at. As the chief styling director, he had mingled with the rich and famous, and knew many of them by heart. So he was stumped when presented with Monica, whom he did not know at all. However, despite not knowing Martin's reason for choosing an unknown woman, since she was the superstar's companion, he would give it his best shot. Okay, leave it to me. He then turned to Monica with a gentle smile. Miss Thames, please follow me. Drake's interest was piqued when he noticed that one of the VIP rooms was locked. Zoe, you have another customer? He had just finished his question when the door to the VIP room was opened from the inside and a man in a neat suit walked out. Martin heard the shuffling noise and subconsciously turned to have a look. He was rooted to the spot. It's her. His handsome face froze. Martin tried hard to mask his work, but Monica still detected his slight shift in temperament. Director Justin, you're here too, Drake asked with astonishment once he recognized the person who had walked out of the VIP room. Justin Wood nodded at him with a fake smile. An elegant figure emerged from the room soon after, and the dressing room suddenly became brighter and grander. Christina George was in a gorgeous gown with a train. The exquisite and delicate makeup she was wearing complimented her pair of startlingly expressive eyes, which could seduce almost any man. Monica was also blown away by her beauty. So beautiful. She did not avidly follow the entertainment news, so she was unable to recognize the beauty before her. Christina, who was one of the four most popular actresses in the current film industry, was also the most highly paid first-rate actress. She acted in a teen movie called Bamboo Dragonfly at 16. Her sweet and innocent screen image was idolized by tens of millions of fans. She went viral in the filming scene. Bamboo Dragonfly was the first film directed by James. 
It won him Best Director in 100 Flowers Film Festival and Golden Pin Awards. Martin Lee was dubbed as America's Most Handsome Bachelor after his role as the male protagonist in that film, while Christina became America's first love. She was a goddess in the eyes of many men after that. Many newcomers shot to fame after acting in James' film. The ladies in his movie were nicknamed Phoenix Ladies, but none could compare to Christina's popularity. She was way ahead of many in the country's filming industry, and no one could catch up to her. Back then, Martin and Christina were recognized as the golden couple on screen and collaborated in a few other movies and TV shows. It was once rumored that romance had blossomed between the two for real and that they were seeing each other in secret. However, not long after, Christina was unexpectedly confirmed to be romantically involved with the young director of Wood Group. This ended the gossip of their star story romance. There was gossip being tossed around in the entertainment industry. According to it, Christina was from a poor family and very materialistic, and that she was not as innocent as she looked. There were other gossips, too. One said that when Martin lost his mother, Christina was constantly by his side. She even refused movie offers so she could stay by his side. Another rumor claimed that they were seeing each other for quite some time. She was discovered to be after his fame and fortune, so their romance ended. Another tale described how he only regarded her as his sister and could not reciprocate her feelings for him. They went their separate ways once she found another way to reach the top. Zoe hurried over to Christina's side and smilingly praised, Miss Christina, you look fabulous. All eyes will be on you at tonight's gala. Christina looked abashed with his praise on the outside, but was actually rejoicing on the inside. She smiled at her reflection in the mirror and asked her partner, Justin, what do you think? She did not get a response from him. She was rather annoyed with his silence and turned to look at him disapprovingly. This was when she noticed that his eyes were on Monica, who was walking toward the changing room. Seeing Monica, he found her to be oddly familiar. He could not recall her unfamiliar face, yet her eyes' expression was engraved deeply in his heart. Episode 65, Amazing, Tension Grabbing Justin, where are you looking at? Christina called out to him reproachfully. Oh, nowhere in particular. He quickly turned to regard her gown. There was no sign of awe or amazement in his eyes when he praised, Christina, you look so good in this dress. She did not detect the insincerity in his compliment, and instead proudly posed in front of the mirror upon hearing him. Drake looked at this pair of miserable couple and exchanged a cold snort with Martin. <laughs> the wife just died, yet he's already changed a few new partners. Which men can be so heartless? Sandra Davis probably did not die in peace. Justin was married when Christina stepped between the husband and wife as the third party. This extramarital affair had been kept under wraps. Justin's wife met with a car accident and passed away not too long ago. This was only when Christina was able to be his partner officially. Don't poke your nose in other people's business. Martin concentrated on picking a suitable gown for Monica. His eyes fell on a glamorous and elegant red gown. This evening gown was personally designed and sewn by one of the world's renowned designers. It was a noble red. The top came with a light shoulder yarn, which followed a small, fluffy skirt flowing down from the waist. The silky gown was exquisite and had all the curves in the right places. Beautiful. It was really beautiful. Martin always had a high aesthetic standard and a strong fashion sense. I want this, he instructed simply. Zoe walked over to look at his choice and objected discreetly. Martin, 
This gown is our imperial jewel. Does he really want this unknown lady to wear it? That would be wasteful. Besides, the designer said before that not every Asian woman could flaunt the dress. He concluded that Monica would be too frail to look good in it. Even if the gown was suitable for her, other famous ladies would make a fuss about her wearing it. The dress had yet to be worn by any ladies, after all. Many famous socialites and actresses wanted to try it on, but were refused. Christina heard their conversation and came over to have a look. She blushed slightly at the sight of Martin. No woman in the industry could withstand Martin's charm. Not even a first-rate actress like her. She had loved him deeply before. Alas, he was not interested. She was secretly in love with him for four years. That went to show how much feelings she had had for him. She elegantly moved over in her dress, saw his gaze on that red gown, and gently reminded, Martin, the director told me that this is an exclusive imperial jewel and isn't just for anyone to wear. I was also interested in this piece earlier, but I wasn't fit for it. She was trying to hint that no woman would qualify if she could not. Martin completely ignored her existence, as if she were heir, and simply said to Zoe, I want this. Unlock the closet. She felt exasperated when he totally disregarded her. She heard Justin give a slight disapproving cough from behind, and caught herself in time. She awkwardly turned toward her partner. Martin! This dress! Martin did not want to hear any more explanations. The dress is designed to complement a beauty. Zoe, don't you trust my taste? Zoe could not refuse further. He had his assistant open the glass closet, take out the gown, and bring it over to Monica in the changing room. Drake was full of anticipation. He had eyed his piece as well, and wondered how stunning Monica would look in it. Monica quickly changed into the gown and was led by Zoe into the dressing room for her makeup. Justin wanted to leave, but Christina insisted on staying. She wanted to see how Monica would carry the dress. Makeup, styling, accessories, high heels. A woman had to go through a few steps for a full dress-up. While Justin and Christina were getting impatient, Martin was just leisurely flipping through some style magazines without showing a hint of impatience. Finally, the door to the dressing room swung open, and out came Monica. She held the hemline of her dress as she elegantly walked over. Everyone's attention was on her. Under Justin's stunned exclamation, Martin put down the magazine in his hand. Zoe, who was equally amazed, carefully brought Monica before him. Martin, are you happy with it? Zoe spoke with Marvel. It's unbelievable. Miss Monica is able to bring out the elegance of this gown completely. She's the classiest lady I've ever seen this far. Miss Alicia will be most delighted if she sees this. Martin was attracted to Monica the instant he set his eyes on her in this gown. In his many years in the entertainment industry, he had seen so many beautiful people, yet... He could still not help but wonder at this particular creation of God. Beautiful. She was absolutely stunning. Monica looked stylish and elegant. The red gown accentuated her soft, smooth purse. She was sexy, without looking explicit, and subtly gave off the image of nobility. The gown was a blend of oriental allure and European nobility having been designed by a top designer and tailor-made by a top craftsman, this fashion statement was worth a fortune. Martin, who was enchanted by her beauty, made Monica blush with his unbridled stare. Zoe was laughing inside. Martin might appear aloof and detached, but he was a man through and through. No man, not even him, could resist her dignified beauty. Very beautiful. Martin gave his heartfelt verdict after assessing Monica. Two simple words did not hide his amazement. His praise did not go to her head, though. Giving him a faint smile, she respectfully turned to Drake for his opinion. Drake nodded happily. 
looks good. Looks good. Looking so good, Monica. You're so beautiful. I'm at a loss for words. Thank you. She smiled and turned to elegantly inspect herself in the mirror, completely unaware of a pair of lewd eyes staring at her. Justin did not expect to see a woman so beautiful in such an unworldly fashion. His attention was entirely focused on her. The gown might be beautiful, but her classiness and poise were more stunning. Any man would be charmed by her, and he was no exception. Christina stood enviously at the side. A woman's jealousy could be violent. She currently resembled proud peacock that had spread its haughty feathers, only to be robbed of attention by a competitor. She was originally the focus in the store, but no one was looking at her now. Episode 66, The Viciousness of a Top Star Manager Christina was originally the center of attention in the entire store, but no one was looking at her now. She was like an old doll that had fallen into disfavor and was heartlessly thrown aside. Christina indignantly tugged at Justin's sleeve and muttered, Darling, I also want this gown. Buy it. I'm going to wear this to the gala. If you ask me to wear this, I'll definitely be more beautiful than some random bitch. For a while, the man gave no reaction. She raised her head, disgruntled, only to see him staring directly at Monica. Astonishment, admiration, some indescribable emotions fitted in his eyes. She was even more furious and spat with dissatisfaction. Justin! He regained his senses lowered his eyes. Staring coldly at the gown, she did not say anything this time besides, buy that. He hesitated for a moment. He sincerely believed that other than the beautiful girl before his eyes, no one else was befitting of the gown. However, noticing Christina's weak and hurt look, he drew in a deep, chilly breath and stepped forward. Director, how much is this gown? I'm getting this. Zoe seemed to be in a bit of a dilemma, and for a short moment, he did not know what to say in response. Martin requested for this gown first, and it was unfavorable to offend him. Damn, Miss Monica truly gorgeous in it, but if he rejected Justin, it would be unfavorable as well. Martin stared at Monica's back and sneered lightly at him. Mr. Justin, you can't afford this gown. He seethed. Martin... What do you mean by that? What do I mean? Smirked with scorn. I'm being straightforward here. I want this gown. Justin snorted indifferently. Martin was a superstar, but he was just one of many in the entertainment industry. An unpleasant way to say it would be, what was his difference with an actor in ancient times? He turned his head and told Zoe candidly, State your price for this gown. Drake was about to lose his temper and bantered. Starting bid for this gown at Fashion Week was $10,000. How generous of you, Mr. Wood. Justin heard this, and without batting an eyelid, said, $10,000. Getting it. Drake raised a finger. Our Martin is going for $15,000. We're getting it. You. Frustrated, he called out, I'm going for $20,000. As expected of Mr. Wood. You're generous. Truly, very generous. Drake flashed him an evil smile. Martin laid his eyes on this gown, though. It won't be a problem even if we call out $25,000. $40,000. Justin made his final call. Even Drake was flabbergasted at his words. Christina observed everyone's shock and chuckled to herself. This man she had hooked up with was the future successor of Wood Group, so he was truly wealthy. Although Martin was a decade-long actor, he was just a star in the end. How could he compare to Justin? Zoe's expression did not exactly look good, and only gently said, My greatest apologies, Mr. Wood. Once Master Lee lays his eyes on something, he won't give it away to others. Master Lee? What did he mean? 
Why? He's just a small store. Drake lightly frowned and cut in. Mr. Wood, please mind your words. Our Martin is not a person to be offended by the owner of a small enterprise held up by a woman. Wood Group lacked the financial strength it had now at the start. Justin was a fine-looking man, and under his father's arrangement, he was married off to the daughter of the wealthy Davis family. The current Wood Group was formed under the assistance of the Davis family. Phew! Justin was flustered. A small manager dared to look down on him and call a company that was worth a thousand dollars on the market a small enterprise. Soon after, he realized something. Master Lee? Why would Zoe call Martin Lee Master Lee? Drake did not give him a chance to respond and made use of his viciousness, as always. With a sneer, he said, Don't think that you, who relied on a woman to become an upstart five years ago, can show off your deep pockets everywhere now, Mr. Wood. You need to be clear on the difference between the nouveau riche and old money. This gown is elegant and pristine. Don't turn it into a stinky and rotten outfit when it reaches your hands. What this meant was that he was an upstart, and that Martin was truly from a powerful family. Drake, a famous top star manager in Foxcom Entertainment, had top-notch lip service skills. It was as if his mouth was injected with poison, and each word he spouted carried savagery. When he started to manage Martin, the latter was still an innocent young boy, but under his influence, he became equally scheming. Justin was so furious that he nearly suffered from internal bleeding. However, what he said was indeed the truth, and there was no way for him to deny it. Monica stood in front of the dressing table. The smile on her face froze for a split second. The current atmosphere was truly awkward. Martin glanced intensely at him. You're not fit to compete with me. Justin was extremely furious. He was about to speak when he was interrupted by an abrupt sound. It's so lively today! The haughty voice of a woman sounded from beyond the door. Everyone froze, and one by one, they looked in the direction of the door. There, they saw Gracia, who was dressed in a well-cut black gown, appear elegantly and grandly. When everyone caught sight of the man behind her, all of them were instantly astonished. The man who was standing behind her was in a well-tailored, custom-made suit. With his hands in his pockets, his tall and lean figure gave off an intimidating aura that was like an imperial personage. He appeared to be very young, just about twenty-five to others, yet he seemed dignified and extremely mature. This maturity was simply not skin deep, but was in fact bone deep. Looking at him, a calm and standoffish king who was setting the world right came to mind. When he swept his gaze across the room, with a pair of deep-set and attractive eyes that was hidden under the lights and angular face, he almost stole hearts away. This man, standing under the dazzling lights, was proud and overwhelming. Even Martin's aura was suppressed by him. Everyone wore a different expression on their faces. The beautiful face of Monica, which was further enhanced by makeup, turned a few shades paler as she tried to reduce her visibility by standing behind Martin. Nonetheless, the man found her instantly. A strange glint showed in his eyes, but it quickly vanished, and his eyes regained their tranquility. A little boy in a suit was by his side. His beautiful hair was neatly combed, and his face showed coldness and arrogance. It was him, little Sam. Monica occasionally laid her eyes on the child, with her lips quivering. She bit her lower lip with force, and when her eyes happened to meet Sam's, she hastily averted her gaze. Sam thought this to be odd. This woman was truly strange. Why was there a weird expression on her face when she looked at him? She seemed to be hiding from him. The others present wore different expressions side of the child. Sam Lewis was the little royal prince of the Lewis group. Stefan fiercely protected him, even from the most experienced tabloid recorders, so nobody was able to track his trail. Few people had seen Sam before. However, in the industry, 
there were still rumors that Sam wasn't the son of Gracia and Stefan. Gracia was diagnosed to be infertile, and nothing had worked, despite her going around for doctor's consultations or trying out in vitro fertilization. Doctors said that, in this lifetime, she did not have the privilege to bear a baby. Stubbornly going forward with artificial insemination and the pain from it could destroy her body. She was dispirited. She could only accept reality. She could only accept that Sam's biological mother was someone else. Although this was a heavily guarded secret, some insiders still managed to leak this piece of information out. Gracia was, thus, infuriated. As Drake and the others looked at the little child, they were only somewhat surprised. In the past six years, Stefan had carefully kept him away from the eye of the media. Episode 67 Nobles and Commoners As Drake and the others looked at the little child, they were only somewhat surprised. In the past six years, Stefan had carefully kept him away from the eye of the media. Why was he wearing an English-style Armani suit? Was this a plan to let him publicly be known as the Lewis Group's future successor via the gala? What came as a greater surprise to Drake, however, was that Sam's appearance looked very familiar to Monica. Had he seen someone with the same looks before? Drake came to a sudden realization at that, and he turned to look at Monica, only to see that her head was down while she bit on her lower lip. She was clearly suffering in silence. She looked dejected and helpless, with her handsome brows knitted together and her arms defensively hugging each other. She hid herself behind Martin. If one were to look at her and Sam separately, perhaps it would be slightly difficult to make the connection. However, they were now facing each other, and the comparison could be done easily. If it were addressed earlier that Gracia was not Sam's biological mother, Drake might have still withheld his suspicion. But with Sam standing next to her, a clear distinction could easily be made. Blood relation, although mysterious, could not deceive anyone. Inheritance was something even more profound. Little Sam and Gracia that were standing side by side looked nothing alike. In contrast, if he stood next to Monica, he totally looked like her biological son. Drake went back and forth, surveying Monica and Sam, his eyes undully reticent. Martin saw Drake's scrutinizing eyes on Monica and Sam and directed him a warning look. Drake received his warning signal and pursed his lips. He was unaware that, for a long time, Martin's heart could not calm down. Martin, just like the others, had not seen the Lewis family's young master before. This was indeed the first time seeing the child. However, unlike others, he had seen the child by Monica's side before. That boy shared the same facial features with the Lewis family's young master. It was as if they were cast in the same mold. No one would believe it if someone said that they were not twins. The shock and suspicion he felt were more intense than anyone else. The situation suddenly became tense, and the air was so still it seemed frozen. Zoe reacted first by respectfully greeting the man. Mr. Lewis! Mr. Lewis. Justin returned to his senses as well. He retracted his anger and courteously inquired, Mr. Lewis, how have you been? Unlike his earlier display of haughtiness to Martin, his attitude did a 180. His conduct and manner became proper in front of Stefan. No matter how well-known Martin was, he was ultimately only a star. Stefan was different. Lewis Group was a well-known, influential family and owned a business empire. A small subsidiary of it was much more powerful than Wood Group. He could afford to ignore Martin, but not Stefan. Christina had never met Stefan before. The Lewis Group successor had remained enigmatic and inexplicable throughout. Any information on the Lewis family was always based on rumors. Despite this, she understood what to do. 
She put on a graceful demeanor as she observed the formerly proud Justin become all respectful. She put on a beautiful grin and gazed at Stefan with a sweet expression on her face. Justin noticed that Stefan had not given a response. He stepped forward and stretched out his right hand. Mr. Lewis, do you remember me? Mr. Lewis, could this man be from the wealthiest, most mysterious and most influential family in the capital? The Lewis family? Christina listened from the side and kept cursing to herself. The noble with the title of Young Master Lewis was able to humble and cow the snobbish Justin into submission. Who else could it be other than the man from the capital's Lewis family? Stefan nodded first and then looked at him. Compared to Justin's face that displayed formalities, he remained emotionless and formally asked, You are? Justin froze, a flustered smile appearing on his face. Mr. Lewis, have you forgotten me? We've met each other before for the takeover of Davis Corporation. I forgot. The man cut him off. Clearly, he did not have the patience to listen to him. He then left Justin, who had yet to retract his outstretched hand, and Christina, who had an elegant smile on her lips, foolishly standing in one spot. The situation became extremely awkward. Drake could not help but let out a... He then muttered, How delusional. He's just an upstart, yet he's already dreaming of having ties with someone from the high society. These words of his were spoken softly, as if he were talking to himself, yet they were directed to Justin's ears. Justin's face showed rage, and Christina's face was no better as she flushed from embarrassment. He presented himself with utmost respect to the man, yet the man ignored him. Justin was seething. How egocentric! Stefan walked towards Martin. There was, ultimately, a flaw in his cold and indifferent expression. Two men, one mature and conceited, the other as gentle as Jade. One threateningly beautiful, the other refined and handsome. Stefan just had to be taller than Martin, but the former was unavoidably looking down at him. Comparing the two, Martin's presence was somewhat suppressed. The corners of Stefan's mouth curled with scorn and arrogance. He had an indifferent and insincere smile on his face. How beautiful. His eyes turned to the adorned Monica behind Martin, and he was unexpectedly surprised. This woman looked like a lotus in full bloom and past. Her aura was so elegant, it seemed otherworldly. But right now, wearing the glamorous dress, she was dignified and pristine. The red and cockatish dress made her graceful figure stand out. The long dress, which was touching the ground with its hem, was akin to a blooming rose. It complimented her so much that in that moment, she looked like an alluring, beautiful noble. Stefan smirked and added two words. His gown. Whether a piece of clothing was beautiful depended on the person wearing it. Monica was somewhat afraid of the man with an overwhelming presence, so she subconsciously retreated behind Martin even more. Her small, jade-like hand instinctively clutched the hem of Martin's suit. The small gesture was captured by Stefan's eyes. The prideful man at this very moment was slightly disappointed. Sam, who was standing by his father's side, blinked his eyes. The longer he looked at the woman, the odder she seemed to him. She looked so timid, just like a small deer. Deep down, however, Sam thought that she was very beautiful. She looked particularly classy and sophisticated in that long and exquisite red gown. The beautiful woman gave him a strange feeling. Where had he seen this woman before? Somehow, bits and pieces of his dreams appeared in his mind. At this moment, he could not recall anything. Why did he feel that she was so... So familiar. Somehow there seemed to be a very deep bond between them. It was an indescribable and unfathomable feeling, but he did not find it the least bit repulsive. The first time he saw her, she did not feel like a stranger. He even perceived an odd sense of warmth. This warmth was too strange, yet very attractive. He had never felt it before, even from his mother. 
Sam tilted his head. His mind was in quite a mess. His lovely mother was right next to him, yet he could not feel any familiar warmth for her. Stranger was right in front of him, and he could feel warmth radiating from her. He puckered his lips and shook his head. Don't think too much about it. Gracia looked at Monica and saw the strikingly beautiful long gown. It was such an eyesore. Monica was standing in front of Stefan like an elegant and noble fairy queen, when she was simply a commoner. What rights did she have to be in this place? Armani was a fashion landmark of those in high society. A commoner should know better than to invade her territory. She was stealing the limelight, too. Was this not a provocation toward her? Zoe! Gracia bellowed. Zoe hurriedly said with great politeness, Yes, Miss Lewis? Since when did Armani welcome such a lowly commoner? Gracia pointed at Monica scornfully. Her voice was cold. It was as if she were chasing away a lowly beggar. Zoe's face immediately displayed awkwardness as he thought to himself, Armani, why don't you just admit that you're jealous? Where did Miss Thames offend you? Isn't it just because she's prettier and more elegant than you? Miss Lewis, you really aren't tactful when you're jealous. Miss Lewis, there seems to be a misunderstanding. Miss Thames is invited here by Martin. Oh! The arrogant Gracia began to lose her smile. Martin, when did your standards stoop so low that you would actually invite a pitiful commoner to this place? Drake showed a cold and stern expression at that. Miss Lewis, please be respectful. Don't live in too much comfort. When are people classified as nobles and commoners in the store? I did not see commoners prohibited signage at the entrance of Armani. He purposely pretended to cry a little. Miss Lewis, is the commoner you were talking about me? Flustered, Gracia stoically refuted. I'm not talking about you. Then... Is it our Martin? He looked at her with a saddened expression. He just had to hold a handkerchief, and his innocent act would be completed. No, I'm talking about her. She gritted her teeth and pointed at Monica once more. Oh my, when did our Monica become a commoner? She's Martin's female partner for the gala tonight, so I brought her here to try out a gown. Martin's female partner? Her expression completely changed. Even Christina paled in shock. What did Martin's female partner mean? It meant confirmed exposure and publicity. With Martin's popularity alone, one was sure to be featured in many entertainment media outlets. Why? Why her, of all the people? Back when Foxcom Entertainment was heavily promoting Christina... The company's higher-ups pressured Martin into walking the red carpet while holding hands with her. But he never agreed. Why exactly was it her? Christina was so jealous that her eyes turned red. Stefan's eyes, meanwhile, slightly turned cold. Martin's female partner? Would she be attending Foxcom's annual gala tonight? This woman was dolling herself up in grandeur for another man. Stefan lifted his haughty chin a little higher, and the eyes he used to look at Monica suddenly turned dark and gloomy. Episode 68 do you think I am lacking a thousand million? Stefan slightly lifted his proud jaws and gazed deeply at Monica. Unexplained unhappiness surged inside him. He looked up just in time to see her hide behind Martin like a startled cat, totally unnerving him. She was so wary of him, yet she was so close to another man. That really put him off. He gave her one last penetrating look before turning away and leisurely occupying the sofa. The atmosphere was bizarre and awkward for a moment. Little Sam stood at the side, his handsome little face also showing the trace of disdain. Somehow, he felt unhappy at the knowledge that Monica was Martin's partner. He felt that she would be more compatible with his father 
and was startled by this thought. Why? Why did he have such a thought? It was too ridiculous. Still, somehow, he felt strange and unexplainable closeness to the woman. Why? The little lad was thrown off his guard. The two were indeed father and son. They had the same demanding temperament of wanting to have their ways. Gracia swept her haughty eyes around the room. Her gaze fell on Monica and felt a thorn in her eyes. The elegant gown on Monica was too glaringly beautiful. She sauntered over and condescendingly eyed Monica, her lips curling into a smirk. Oh, Martin, when did you lower your taste to get such a low-class woman to be your partner? Gracia continued to look at Monica disdainfully. Her lips were still curled into a seemingly furious smile. She was about the same height as Monica, but the eight-inch heels she was wearing gave her the edge to arrogantly look down on the ladder. She was just like an empress peering down at a lowly maid. Monica calmly met her eyes without anger or fear. This is a masterpiece designed by Alicia from Fashion Week's Gold Award. Who gave you the right to wear it? Gracia proudly lifted her jaws high. When Zoe heard her question, he politely said with his shoulders, shrinking in fear, Young Mistress Lewis, I was the one who let her try it on. You? She angrily snapped at him. Do you know how expensive this dress is? Who gave you the authority to try it on her? It's me. Martin answered calmly, explaining. I judged that this beautiful gown would look good on Monica. Monica? Why is he addressing her so intimately? Stefan's eyes sank deeper. The unhappiness in his heart grew even more. Gracia softened her tone toward Martin. Martin, this is a masterpiece by Master Alicia that is worth a fortune. How can you bear... She's worth it. Besides, Monica really looks good in it. He lowered his gaze at Monica and reached out his hand to tidy a stray sideburn. Subtle, yet affectionate gesture stung a few people present, especially Stefan. The displeasure in his eyes deepened. Shit. He did mind. He actually cared if someone else touched her. Such an eyesore. This kind of feeling was so damn irritating. Gracia did not notice the inscrutable expression on Stefan's face as she went on. Martin. Tonight is Foxcom Entertainment's yearly gala. Many important guests, as well as entertainment media, will be attending it. Aren't you worried about losing face by bringing such an unremarkable partner? Drake frowned with dissatisfaction at her mean words. Zoe quietly added, I feel that Miss Thames looks very good in this dress. Gracia pursed her bright red lips and gave a sharp warning look at Zoe probably shut his mouth in fear. Christina was happy, though. She disliked Monica with her poor and unremarkable background. The growing disgust within her was vented through Gracia's timely, malicious words. She mockingly said, with a touch of schadenfreude, Young Mistress Lewis has a point. The poor will always be poor no matter how they dress up. She's a sparrow here trying to be a phoenix? Dream on. Gracia smoothed her sleeve and gracefully crossed her arms. What Christina had just addressed her with was music to her ears. Christina's words could be as sweet as honey when they could help her climb higher. She took Justin's arm as she said, with a disdainful and provoking smile, It is better if she stops shaming herself and returns to her slum. Drake raised an eyebrow at that and asked sarcastically, for Monica is poor, then how about Miss Heavenly Christina? Christina was dumbfounded. Of course, she was also poor. Her family was actually so poor that the five of them had to squeeze into a tiny room. She was from a real slum, and because of that, she was now very materialistic. Once she graduated from high school, she entered an art school. She had neither the smarts nor talent for learning. She only managed to enter the show business when she luckily got that role in James Scott's movie before graduation. To formally step into show business, she did everything, 
even if it caused her pain and suffering. Her hard work paid off, and she was now famous. The entertainment media had criticized her as uncultured, and that was her sore spot. Drake saw her awkwardness and continued in a critical tone. In any case, Harmonica is a prestigious art school product and is highly regarded by Director Scott. Director Scott? Christina's face sank. Director Scott? Which Director Scott? Oh my, you're so forgetful. How can you not remember the mentor who made you famous? Drake quipped nonchalantly. Jane Scott. How could she forget him? He was one of the most talented directors in the American film industry. Two of his movies were box office winners for three consecutive years. Isn't director Scott busy with his latest film, which is an adaption of a teen novel? Is she the female lead? Gracia was also surprised to hear this tidbit. On the sofa, Stefan's handsome face displayed a trace of change at the news. Christina blurted out, How can that be? Director Scott chose her as the female lead? Why? She was able to get the lead role in Bamboo Dragonfly because she had the biggest investor's support back then. Director Scott was displeased with her because of that and had been nasty toward her since then. What did she do to get the role? She used the same underhanded means, too? Why? Martin smiled. Ignoring others around him, he reached out and pulled Monica close to his side with eyes full of tenderness. Some may come from a humble background, but they will always emanate innocence and beauty. Monica may not be famous, but she's the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. Gracia looked at Martin and suddenly got it. He was planning to create some hype for Monica with his popularity. He was evidently satisfied with this female lead whom James had chosen. If it were not the case, Martin, with his aloof and detached nature, would not allow her to ride on his coattails. This Monica, what did she do to receive such favors from the heavens? I don't care who selected her. She's not welcome here. Gracia's eyes shone with malice. With a voice somewhat twisted by jealousy, she demanded, Take that dress off and get out. Monica felt slightly embarrassed because of her humiliating words. This woman was willing to go this far just to humiliate her? It was too much. She smilingly asked, Why should I? She was not going to undress just because someone said so. She, Monica would not be bullied. Gracia laughed haughtily, as though she had heard a ridiculous joke. <laughs> you ask me why? Zoe reluctantly informed, Miss Thames, I'm very sorry. Armani is a property under the Lewis Group. Monica was slightly startled. It was no wonder Gracia was so arrogant. She was the lady boss of Armani. Martin said with a smile, I'll buy this gown. Gracia snorted. Not for sale. A thousand million. He spouted a figure without flinching. Even Drake was shocked to hear the figure. God, Martin, has he gone mad? A thousand million? How did he get that figure? Even though he liked Monica very much, a thousand million for a gown was still too much. Monica was very moved by Martin's action. She knew that the gown was not worth it, but he was willing to buy it for that amount to protect her pride. It would be greatly humiliating for her if she had to take off the gown and be chased away from here. He was shielding her dignity. Was it worth it? Martin, why did he treat her with such gentleness and care? Martin, are you mad? Christina could not bear to watch this further and chipped in. This gown is not worth a thousand million. I like it, he replied with just two simple words, totally disregarding Christina's unhappiness. I'll buy this with one thousand million, he calmly declared to Gracia. You! Gracia was furious and stared at him in disbelief. At one side, Stefan coldly replied, Not for sale. Everyone actually sighed in relief at his words. The gown was not for sale, even with a thousand million. But why not? Drake asked with a touch of annoyance. 
Director Lewis, this is 1,000 million we are talking about. It's an astronomical amount. Stefan leaned like an emperor on the sofa. His haughty and suppressive presence permeated every corner of the shop. Do you think I'm lacking a thousand million? Episode 69 No Comparison, No Harm Done Stefan leaned like an emperor on the sofa. His haughty and suppressive presence permeated every corner of the shop. Do you think I'm lacking a thousand million? Everyone did not get what he meant at first, but eventually realized that, indeed, as the sole heir to the massive fortune of Makewell Financial Group, he could keep or sell whatever he wanted. Makewell Financial Group was prominent, not just in the capital, but also in the Asian market. That 1,000 million was nothing to him. Christina was astonished to learn something about the Lewis family. She knew that they were one of the richest in the capital, but did not realize the extent of their power. In comparison, the sullen-looking Justin, who was standing next to her, was nothing at all. She bit her lower lip in frustration at her lack of foresight, but could not help but feel jealous of Gracia. Wood Group was a laughing stock next to Lewis Group. Martin and Monica were floored by Stefan's domineering provocation. Even Drake, with his typical viciousness, could only sigh helplessly. He knew Stefan too well. Stefan was out to challenge Martin. Martin's face turned a shade darker. A chilly look flashed across his usually calm and collected demeanor. He knitted his brows tightly and turned to face Stefan. Both men stared at each other. The atmosphere was charged with explosives. Director Lewis, this gown is displayed at the shop, yet it is not for sale. What's the meaning of this? Stefan arched his lips into a graceful smile and slowly stood up. To sell or not to sell, it's my prerogative. No one can interfere with my decision. The room was once again charged by his commanding presence and tyrannical action. Martin's eyes were full of hostility, and his muscles turned palpably rigid. As he was about to speak, Monica tugged at his sleeve. He was startled into looking down and saw her pleasant smile. She calmly told him, Martin, thank you for your kindness, but I think I'll return the gown. Don't worry, the dress suits you. I still prefer the gown that Drake and you had selected earlier. I really like that pure white evening gown. She gently caught him off with a shake of her head. When Christina heard this, she laughed mockingly. <laughs> Our money belongs to the Lewis family. Of course, it is up to Director Lewis to decide whom he wants to give the dress. He adores young Mistress Gracia, so why should he give the gown to a nobody? These words were hurtful to Monica's ears for no apparent reason. Gracia is his fiancée, of course. He won't give up that one-of-a-kind pretty gown to others. Still, why was there a stuffy feeling in her heart? Monica gave a self-deprecating laugh. Is there a question? He evidently loves his fiancée. Would he do this if that were not the case? I'm just a nobody to him. She actually did not mind not wearing the gown. It was glamorous and would definitely attract attention to her during the gala. However... She was just a newcomer with no decent background to boast of or a film to showcase. Such unwanted attention would only bring her trouble in the future. She was not a vain woman, so people's attention was not important to her. Monica walked toward the changing room with a carefree smile. She gracefully held the gown's hemline as she made her way across the room. Her steps were firm and her back was upright without signs of despondence or clumsiness. Her serenity actually made Gracia and Christina feel ugly and embarrassed. They stood at the side, waiting to see how she would run back to her shabby house in tears after their humiliation, or plot her next move to take advantage of the situation. However, either did not happen. Monica's calmness highlighted the viciousness and hypocrisy of Christina and Gracia. Justin's eyes were full of admiration as he watched Monica walk away. 
She was deeply shaken. She was destined for doom earlier, as no one could protect her dignity before Stefan. Unexpectedly, she was able to walk away from the situation without a hint of shame. Monica was not Gracia. She was not rich, but some women were like this. They had innate aristocracy and elegance that were hard to replicate. Stefan watched Monica from behind with narrowed and unreadable eyes. He could not fathom her intention. He wanted to send her into a helpless state with his humiliation, but she maintained her gracefulness from start to finish. She was incomprehensible. Unhappy. He was very unhappy. The woman was not as easy to control as he had thought. Stefan admitted that he had thoroughly humiliated and embarrassed her because she submissively hid behind Martin's back earlier. Before him... She was like a fully armed kitten that had its sharp claws out to defend against him. He might seem indifferent most of the time, but he was actually a control freak. He had hidden his real nature well. He had an inherently tyrannical nature, which would not tolerate any defiance. Yet he just had to meet an equally domineering woman. He pursed his lips into a thin line as his gaze turned unfathomable. Zoe felt bad for Monica and followed her into the changing room. With his help, she changed into the former evening gown, altered her hairstyle, and replaced her elegant accessories with simple ones. Feeling guilty, he carefully applied another set of makeup on her. Since the outfit was simpler and more delicate, her makeup would naturally need adjustment to go with it. Gorgeous makeup on her face was replaced with a light one, when Zoe looked into the mirror, he saw Monica's extraordinary face. Her features were already distinct and beautiful. Under his top-notch manipulation of makeup, she looked even more stunning. Monica stood up and smiled at Zoe, who could only marvel inside. What an extraordinary beauty. She actually doesn't need any outfit or maquillage to accentuate her looks. Even in a plain white dress, She's already gorgeous. When she stepped out of the changing room while holding the hemline of her dress, she was once again the center of attention. The wonder in Martin's eyes was even more apparent. Little Sam, who was next to Stefan's lap, was speechless. At the side, Justin stared at her with him, was astounded and jealous. Monica had such a beauty and grace. Why was she so blessed by the heavens? Gracia had a perplexed look on her face as her eyes shone with malevolence. Monica walked toward Martin and Dre and smilingly asked, How is it? Excellent. Beautiful. Really beautiful. Monica, but in anything, you are a natural coat hanger. Glancing at Christina, Dre could not resist digging further. No matter how beautiful the clothes may be, just like a certain someone here, some people can only be accessories. There's no competition at all. Christina could only fume inwardly at his words. Despite being mocked, she could not retaliate. Drake might only be an agent, but he was an ace in Foxcom Entertainment and had access to multiple resources and influential people. She could not afford to offend him. Martin chipped in. Drake, you've got good taste. This outfit is beautiful. Monica looks good in any outfit. His assistant was still marveling at Monica's natural beauty. She replied with a smile. Oh, no. Easy Drake really has good taste. Oh, my. Your words are as sweet as honey and bring delight to my heart. Martin's infuriation dispersed as he looked at her. He turned to address Zoe. This is good. Bill it to my account. Zoe nodded and took a careful glance at Stefan's face. Somehow, Director Lewis seems to pay extra attention to this newcomer. 
Stefan was looking down without paying attention to Monica. It seemed she was somewhat nondescript. Zoe pursed his lips. Could he be mistaken? He had a hunch that Director Lewis was particularly concerned about this woman, yet he seemed to be indifferent toward her right now. A man could be inscrutable, especially someone like Stefan. Up to when Monica left with Martin, he did not look in her direction. Gracia quickly instructed Zoe to pass her the gown Monica had taken off and hurriedly stepped into the changing room. She was full of anticipation to see how she might look in the dress. She originally did not like the gown. She preferred royal purple compared to a rose red. However, Monica looked so good in the gown that it attracted his attention. That naturally made her unhappy. In what way does she deserve to be so outstanding? She had to show them that she looked equally stunning in the gown. She could not wait to prove this to everyone. Soon, she pompously came out of the dressing room in the gown. She was thinking inside that she was more stunning in it than Monica. She waited for their praises with their jaws held high, but all eyes dimmed a little instead as they looked at her. Even Christina almost burst into laughter. It was so tacky. The elegant evening dress seemed a little gaudy on her body. Bringing out the classiness in an outfit was up to a person. An ordinary being would be unable to look good in such a glamorous gown. Monica looked so good in it, while Gracia became an accessory to it. For a moment, the atmosphere was silent and cold. Christina knew how to take stock of the situation and immediately quipped, Young Mistress Lewis, you look so good in this outfit. This compliment was so cheesy, even little Sam detected the insincerity in her words. Episode 70, Take It Off the compliment was so cheesy, even Sam detected the insincerity in her words. In the tense and stifling silence of the dressing room, the praise sounded fake and awkward. There was no competition or comparison at all. Monica was able to wow everyone present when she was wearing the gown earlier. Gracia, who was now dressed in the same gown, was greatly overshadowed. The dress was elegant and sophisticated, yet it looked unbearably tacky on her body. Monica had a good figure, with her slim waist, slender long legs, elegant shoulders, and exquisite collarbones. The gown was able to accentuate all these assets with just the right touch. As for Gracia, she just did not have the right figure to carry off this gown. Her voluptuous figure looked vulgar and crude in the dress. Stefan opened his eyes to have a look, and immediately felt disgusted at the sight of her. He recalled how incomparably magnificent Monica had looked in this gown. It was a sharp contrast from what he was seeing now. There was a long silence before Zoe launched his perfunctory praise. Gracia, you look good in this dress. Gracia's face turned dark at his phony compliment. Unhappily looking at the dull and awkward faces of those around her, she forced out a smile and asked, Why? You mean I don't look good in this, right? Christina smilingly replied, You look good, beautiful and elegant. Her words sounded hollow, though, as she truly did not know what else to praise. It was in women's nature to compete with envy. Gracia would not allow Monica to outshine her. Sam was still young and did not understand the need for hypocrisy. He frowned and said, Mommy, you don't look good in that. Christina's mouth twitched ever so slightly. 
Why is this child so honest and direct? Gracia almost threw up at his next words. That pretty sister looks better in this gown. This dress doesn't suit mommy, so it's better if you change into another one. Her face looked more terrible now. Christina tried to lessen the blow with a smile. He's just a child. He doesn't know what he's saying. Gracia does look good in that dress. Huh. You are so good at bootlicking. Are you trying to embarrass my mommy at the reception tonight? Sam harshly retorted when his taste was questioned. His words really infuriated Christina. Fearing that Gracia would take his words seriously, she quickly clarified, Gracia, I did not have such a thought. Gracia ignored her. She walked toward Stefan and asked with a smile, Stefan, do I look good in this dress? She insisted on an answer from him. It did not matter what others think. His approval would beat all the praises from anybody. She had been disgraced, but his one word would salvage the situation. If he said she looked good, no one would dare say otherwise. His words were like edicts that none dared to refute. Stefan slowly raised his head and looked at her. Seeing that there was no admiration and only intolerance in his eyes, Gracia's heart turned cold. Take it off. One heartless command from him pinned her to the spot in utter embarrassment. Why? Did I give you permission to wear this? Stefan snorted. Her face turned stiff and ugly. She did not understand. He had always given in to her demands. She could have whatever she wanted. He always spoiled her and would agree to anything she asked for, even if it was unreasonable. Why was he suddenly so cold and distant toward her? Why? Why must I take it off? Do you mean I can't compare it to her? That bitch? Take it off. I'll give you five minutes to change into another dress. With that, he fixed his gaze on his wristwatch. He was counting the time down. I won't. She was on the verge of tears. I like this. I'm going to wear this to the gala tonight. He frostily said, Have limited patience. Gracia was alarmed. He had never been heartless to her before. My God, that bitch must be a vixen incarnate. All men have been bewitched by her. One minute left. He coldly warned. This was a hint to her that he would not leave her even a shred of dignity if she did not obey within the last minute. He always did what he threatened. With much resentment, she stomped into the dressing room to change into another evening gown. The Bentley slowly and steadily drove on the highway toward the hotel for the yearly gala. Inside the car, Monica silently sat down with her head lowered. She no longer had that self-confidence she had displayed earlier. From her profile, one could tell that she was feeling down. Martin, who was sitting beside her, watched her closely. He saw her looking out of the window with her head still lowered. Her thin and frail frame was heart-wrenching to see for him. She was the kind of woman a man would want to care for and protect. Recalling the earlier scene at the Armani showroom where he saw that lad, Sam, that looked so much like her, his head was filled with questions. Rumors had it that Gracia was betrothed to Stefan, the Lewis household successor since young. The two were childhood sweethearts and were so in love with each other. This was only a friend, however. In truth, Stefan was a cold and aloof man who had never fallen in love with any woman. Gracia was also not the biological mother of Sam. She was diagnosed to be infertile and had no ability to bear a child. Sam's real mother was somebody else. Is she the mother? Martin mumbled. That day, he saw her with a little boy whose age and features were identical to Sam's. Martin softly chuckled. He actually minded about this matter, yet he had no right to ask. Drake was also looking at her. He wanted to console her, but did not know how or where to start. Monica looked at the man beside her and thanked him sincerely. Martin, without earlier, thank you. Thank you for guarding my pride. What's there to thank for? He asked with amusement. 
even though it is incredibly gorgeous, that gown isn't worth a thousand million. Was that dress not worth a thousand million? He smiled and disagreed. It is worth it. Oh. She looked at this handsome man with some surprise. His smile was soft and gentle, yet his tone was serious and firm. Monica, you deserve the best. Episode 71, Dress Up for the Show Monica, you deserve the best. Martin looked at her and said this. Simple statements like the summer wind left his warm and gentle lips. Monica was a little flattered. Martin, why are you so good to me? I don't know. He smiled ruefully. You're a girl who makes me want to take care of you. Thank you. She was deeply and sincerely grateful to him. The annual event tonight was to commemorate Foxcom Entertainment's 10th anniversary. It was a gathering of all of Hollywood's biggest names in cinema, television, and music, as well as respected filmmakers and VIP financiers. As a result, international entertainment reporters would undoubtedly cover this spectacular event. Foxcom Entertainment was once known as Foxcom Records. It was once the number one music recording firm, producing a slew of super idols. In the music industry, no one came close to matching this company's performance. After a while, however, the music industry entered a period of slump, and Foxcom Records faced the issue of going bankrupt. Make Wealth Financial Group later bought it and officially renamed it Foxcom Entertainment. It then became a company where many first-rate performers and the big four stars agents gathered. Thanks to this, Foxcom Records could continue its legacy. Before anyone knew it, Foxcom Entertainment had been in business for 10 years. Tonight's gala was bound to be spectacular. It was no wonder that the young starlets and passes were cudgeling their brains out for a chance to walk the red carpet and make an appearance at tonight's event. If they were able to grab the right opportunity, they could rise to stardom and make a comeback. One must know that many well-known directors and producers would be present in it. More importantly, the president of Makewell Financial Group would be an attendee too. The president of Makewell. He was the prince of the sole successor to Louis, the most elite family in the capital. Stefan had always been secretive and elusive, and news about him was few and far between. The public knew very little about this mysterious, noble prince, as he seldom showed his face. Once the socialites and elites confirmed his attendance at the gala, the ladies spent much effort to dress up in hopes of earning some brownie points by leaving a deep impression on the blue-blooded president. What did it matter if he had a fiancé? There was always the possibility of having a wife with two or more mistresses for such an elite household like the Lewis family. For instance, Stefan's grandfather had a legal wife and two mistresses. His father was the first wife's son and was doted on by Grandpa Lewis. Plenty of elites would also be attending the gala, just to see the young master of the Lewis family for themselves. Even if they could not attract his attention, anyone from the Lewis family would do too. The reporters were thus stunned by the resulting glamour at the event. Everything was too luxurious and over the top to the point of being decadent. Only the Lewis family had such power and influence in the whole capital. For the sake of attending the gala, Emma poured her life savings of a thousand dollars into renting an extended Bentley. The Bentley rode to the venue and stopped at the entrance. She adjusted her outfit one last time. She paid special attention to arranging the beautiful piece of jewelry on her neck to ensure that the media would see it from the best angle. She had put in a lot of effort and attention to look her best in this gala to heighten her chance of exposure. Monica... You don't deserve to attend this gala. Stay at home watching TV with your bastard son as I dazzle everyone here. She cursed under her breath. She put on a perfect smile as the chauffeur opened the car door for her. 
She held her chin high, proudly straightened her back, lightly pushed her hair behind her shoulders, and then proceeded to walk the red carpet. She attracted the attention of many female stars with her appearance. There were praises or shocked exclamations centered on her neck and the priceless jewel hanging on it. Emma garnered all the attention the moment she stepped on the red carpet. The paparazzi saw her and aimed their cameras at her to take pictures one after another. Other female stars were discussing among themselves, Who is this newcomer? as they glared daggers at her. She's wearing Armani from the latest summer series. Oh God, look at her neck. It's a necklace from the Harry Winston series. They heard that a gem is worth millions. It must be fake. Harry Winston is a worldwide limited edition, so it's not easy to get your hands on it. Definitely fake. The Harry Winston necklace is priceless. Where did this new cover come from for her to be wearing such fake jewelry? Oh, I heard there's a sugar daddy who wanted to buy this necklace at an auction at an exorbitant price. Everyone was discussing this matter fervently. Emma could not make out what they were talking about, but she knew that she was currently the center of attention with the many jealous pairs of eyes looking at her. Her heart was snug as she strutted to the entrance with her head high and ample bust raised. She was politely blocked by the concierge at the door, however. How are you, madam? Kindly show your gala invitation card, please. Invitation card? Does one need an invitation card to attend this gala? She was momentarily thrown off, but quickly recovered herself. With her proud chin lifted high, she sneered at the man. Well, what's the meaning of this? Are you asking me for an invitation card? Do you think I'll attend this gala without an invitation? Sorry, madam. You have misunderstood. Asking for an invitation card from a guest is one of the protocols for tonight. The concierge's face continued to smile politely, though there were doubts in his eyes. Rigorous entry protocols were being followed for tonight's gala. This was to prevent the young, naive, and unpopular models and starlets from gate-scratching this event. Some entertainers tried entering the venue without an invitation card. Foxcom Entertainment had given out 500 invitation cards and 100 guest passes for this event. There were a hundred seats for the media representatives, and all guests had to display their passes before they were allowed entry. There was no exception. She looked slightly embarrassed and unhappily retorted, I'm the partner of Charlie. Does this require an invitation card too? Yes. May I ask which Charlie you are referring to? The well-known director, Charlie Sanchez. <laughs> A burst of disdainful laughter came from her side. She frowned in shameful frustration, turned her head over, and saw Clara Winslet, one of the four most popular starlets, laughing at her. Tonight, she was dressed in an evening gown with a golden tassel. The long and flowy gown made her look extra slender and tall, simple yet luxurious. And with the diamond jewelry on her neck and exquisite makeup, she looked stunning. As a top public figure, she, Claire, knew how to build publicity for herself. She attracted many camera flashes from the media the moment she appeared. However, halfway on the red carpet, the attention shifted away from her to this unknown newcomer. Naturally, she was very unhappy about it. Where did this newcomer come from? Why doesn't she know the rules? Episode 72, Being Spiteful Where did this new word come from? Why doesn't she know the rule? She was an unknown newcomer who had violated the unspoken rules when she snatched the limelight from the seniors with her extravagant appearance. This is not for show. Is she doing this on purpose? Claire didn't like Emma's look. She looked like a bimbo, kind who would act without thinking. And indeed, she was right. By stealing the limelight, she had offended many stars who were more experienced than her. Which director did you come with? She asked as she haughtily walked up to her. Emma was somewhat dumbstruck by her presence. This woman had a domineering demeanor and haughty eyes. I'm... 
I'm with Charlie. I'm his partner. Claire was being spiteful to her. After all, Emma had unreservedly seized all the attention that was meant for her, so she naturally would not make it easy for this newbie. There are so many directors with Charlie as their name. Not everyone is qualified to enter this venue. Tell me his name and I'll determine his qualifications. Emma gritted her teeth in frustration. This woman was making things difficult for her. Who her partner was had nothing to do with her. Still, she knew that Claire had a tough backing behind her. Those actresses who managed to make it big in the entertainment industry would have strong supporters backing them up. Thus, she did not dare offend her. Otherwise, as a newcomer, she would be banned from this industry before she could make an appearance. As such, she respectfully replied, It's... it's Charlie. Charlie Sanchez. You stammer when you speak. Seems to me that you're not used to such splendor. Do you think you are a fit to attend this gala in the first place? Sister Claire, as she has just said, she is Charlie's partner. That Charlie is... <laughs> Another effulgently dressed female star that was standing next to Claire whispered this to her. This actress was Stella Morris. She was the supporting character in a TV drama in which Claire was the female lead. She gained quite the fame due to the show's popularity and subsequently received several acting offers. She became rather close to Claire lately. Though she was whispering, in fact, she was making Emma hear it. Her words were full of humiliation. The newcomers nowadays will do anything to get ahead, won't they? Charlie has such a notorious reputation, and she can stand to be with him. She must be a sadist. Clara gave a sarcastic laugh. <laughs> True. There are some newcomers who don't know any better. They think they own the world once they grab a thigh. Who do they think they are? Show business is not meant for every other person to crawl into. That's right. Emma was full of grievances, as she could not rebut despite their continuous humiliation of her. She could only pout while tears welled up in her eyes, clenching the edge of her dress in silent anger. Stella rubbed it in further. Oh no, look at her, acting so pitiful. Sister Claire, she seems to be the calculative type. With how she is dressed for the occasion, she's obviously trying to undermine you. Is she fit? The other asked. I think what she's wearing is all fake. Emma immediately cut in. No, no. How about that jewel on your neck? Where did you get it? Claire did not believe her and forced her into giving an affirmative reply. This necklace is worth a few million. Can you afford it? That's impossible. It must be fate. She looks like a country bumpkin. A few invited actresses at their side had crowded around them and started to voice their vicious and sarcastic remarks one after another. Emma was shaking with fury. These women were out to humiliate her just because they were jealous and unhappy of her stealing the limelight from them. Thus, with no other choice and without any rescuer, Emma remained standing there, her heart full of grievances and listened to them endlessly humiliating her. Wait and see. Just wait and see, all of you. Remember tonight's humiliation. You'll pay for this one by one. When I become famous one day, I'll exact vengeance a hundred, no, a thousand times to you all. The entertainment reporters beside her were sympathetic. Snoopy has offended many seniors in the field even before she steps into the venue. Pitiful indeed. However, as a newbie in the entertainment industry, one needs to know how to keep a low profile, or they risk stepping on the wrong toes. Hence, no one came to her rescue. Claire held the highest status among those present. She was at the peak of her career after eight years in the entertainment industry, and no one dared to offend her. What's happening? Why is everyone crowding at the entrance? A male voice. Husky and Chris was heard from behind. Everyone turned to look and was surprised to see Edward Taylor standing behind. He was wearing a handcrafted suit, fine tailoring details that made him look outstanding. His handsome face garnered many screams the moment he entered the venue. 
Edward was Foxcom's latest idol. He was highly popular with his intellectual persona and exceptional appearance. His outstanding qualities landed him two big commercials and five teen drama series. Highly productive and resourceful, he was a teen idol greatly valued and promoted by Foxcom Entertainment. Emma saw him looking at her pitifully humiliated self and looked at him imploringly, telling him with puppy eyes that he was her last chance at getting out of this shameful situation. She looked adorable with her red-rimmed eyes. He could not help but take pity on her. Looking at Claire, he asked, Sister Claire, why aren't you going in? He was on good terms with her. Both were from the same company and co-acted in a TV drama series with a high viewership. Rumors that both fell in love with each other afterward circulated and even became the hottest news in the capital for many months. She replied, This little bitch is blocking my way. An ambitious newbie who is out to grab attention. He gently smiled at her. Sister Claire looks so pretty tonight. All the attention will definitely be on you. She liked what she heard and blushed at his compliment. She gushed. Oh, Edward, you look so smart tonight. You'll definitely be in the news tomorrow. Thank you for the compliment, Sister Claire. You know that the media is already waiting inside the venue. Don't pick a fight with a newcomer, or you'll be labeled as a bully if there flakes out. You'll lose more than you gain. He advised. Oh, you are right, she agreed. As she smiled, she took his arm. Both then walked into the dining hall. Emma watched with a pounding heart as they walked away. Seeing that the two had left, Stella decided to leave as well. She snorted, gave the newcomer a warning look, and followed the pair into the hall. Shortly after, Charlie arrived. Emma, who was waiting for him at the entrance, immediately approached him and hooked her arm through his as she cattishly moaned, Oh, Charlie, you're finally here. I almost assumed you were going in without me. Episode 73, Clear Skies and Fine Sceneries, Part 1. Oh, Charlie, you're finally here. I almost assumed that you were going in without me. At this point, Charlie was locking arms with a famous model. When he spotted Emma in her extraordinary dress, he was momentarily dazed, but was unable to recall who she was. She only looked vaguely familiar. He had played with plenty of women. His partners would change almost every night, and when he played, he played hard. You are... He questioned, his countenance disturbed. Charlie, who is she? exclaimed the model next to him flirtatiously. Mr. Charlie, my name is Emma. Do you have any recollection of me? She was taken aback and questioned, perplexed. He wouldn't take advantage of her only to break his word later, would he? It was fine for him to break his pledge, but he should have at least brought her in. Scram! The model did not wait for him to reply to Emma, and merely linked her hand with his, waiting to drag him away. Wait a minute! Emma, who was embarrassed to the point of rage, clenched her teeth. Distracting his path, Emma said, Monica Thames is my older sister. You do remember her, Mr. Charlie, don't you? Monica Thames? Emma? She's her younger sister? He instantly remembered her. He then examined her from head to toe and a tinge of avarice peered in his eyes. Emma, you've dressed so well today that I almost didn't recognize you. Emma sighed in relief at that. She bet his chest with indignation and coquetry as crocodile tears fell down drop by drop from her eyes. Charlie, you almost thought that you don't remember me. I waited for you for so long. The concierge refused me entry. It was really embarrassing to stand there at the entrance. He felt disgusted by her pitiful and coy act that goosebumps rose on his skin. He had seen tons of women like her in his many years in the industry, and he was already sick of the tactics she just played. Emma was actually decent-looking, 
just a tad hypocritical. She always acted innocent and harmless, but was in fact unrestrained. He toyed with her once and knew that she was the typical snob. She would do anything to rise in status. No matter how hardcore the game was, she welcomed everything. He would at most play with this type of woman for a night or two before throwing them away. He would not take them to heart. Men had a strong desire to subjugate women. Women like this, who threw themselves at men, were especially worthless. He was easily fed up with them instead. However, she was Monica's younger sister, and that made a difference. He was more interested in Monica. Besides her natural charm, just the thought of her innate stubbornness already excited him. If he managed to conquer her, it would be such an accomplishment. Moreover, she seemed to have some intimate relationship with Stefan. The woman Stefan had his eyes on must taste good. Just by thinking about it, greed nearly emanated from his eyes. Emma, sorry to hear that. I'm late. Saying this, he easily pushed away from the model by his side and embraced Emma instead. Charlie, what are you doing? The woman panicked. Her round, fiery eyes glared at Emma, but the latter merely countered with a haughty expression, shrugging her off. Go back in today. The woman seized. Charlie, you promised that you'll bring me to see the big event. Next time, then. Change mind. He impatiently coughed. The woman's lips shriveled in annoyance, but she did not badger her further, and just her leave with an ashen face. Emma was over the moon and glanced at her with interest. He laid out his plan and asked, everything go? Your sister? Could she come? Come? Could she come? She's wearing her sister's gown. So how could the latter come? She had never thought of bringing her adoptive sister along the first place. If she were to walk side by side with her adoptive sister, she would snatch away all the spotlight. She was also unbothered by his request. As long as she could infiltrate this venue, she could hook up with anyone and everyone who would be an attractive investor. Why would she take fancy to a mere Charlie? She could not expose her true intentions this early, though. Don't worry. I've got everything settled. You'll definitely be satisfied tonight. She smiled seductively as she nibbled at his ear. Her intimate association unknowingly triggered a numbness at his lower abdomen. The gala had yet to start, but he could hardly wait. He nodded in satisfaction and hinted, Listen, inside... There is a row of wine specially arranged. One gulp, and they'll get a strong kick. The wine was spiked with a certain amount of aphrodisiac and incapacitating agents. Those who were in the industry long enough knew of this unspoken rule, but most newbies were unaware of this trick. Some investors would have someone pass this wine to a newbie to drink if they were interested in her. Once she drank it, she would fall into their trap. Charlie... I get what you want me to do, but if I were to succeed with my mission, then what would you promise me? An idle drama that Foxcom invested in this year. I'll arrange to let you into the crew as the female lead. He was withholding something in his eyes. Charlie, don't go back on your words. She planted a kiss on his chin in satisfaction and smiled radiantly. Of course. He grinned as the flame of ambition burned in his eyes. It was star-studded on the gala's red carpet. Its luxurious lineup was comparable to a global movie festival. Amidst the reporter's hubbub, a nanny van traveling at high speed slowly came to a halt at the venue's entrance. Christina and Justin then walked the red carpet while holding hands. They had just appeared, yet many reporters were already surrounding and blocking their way. Standing on the red carpet, she, with exquisite makeup, wore a long-trailed oriental dress. Linking her arm with Justin's, she walked toward the stage with dignity and grace. Flashes of light accompanied their entrance. They enhanced her alluring makeup and made her seem more beautiful. Who knew how many films were instantly used up to capture her lavish appearance? She put up her signature smile, and under the camera flashes, it was captivating. It was a moment to testify one's popularity on the red carpet. 
She clutched his hand tightly and continuously posed. The two interacted with great intimacy under the reporter's requests. This was when someone bellowed, Ah! Martin Lee! He's coming! He's coming! The biggest star of tonight's gala! Oh God, Martin! Martin! Keep it up! Keep it up! Ouch! Don't push! Many excited reporters flooded the entrance to the red carpet again. Christina was posing and stroking her hair in coquetry, but in the blink of an eye, the reporters were completely gone, and no further interest was shown on her. She was still maintaining her signature hand wave, so she and Justin ended up standing there rather awkwardly and humiliatingly. The smile on her face twitched and then stiffened. She grinned her teeth in anger and could not take this lying down. She looked in the direction of where the media reporters had gone in droves. On the red carpet, Martin, who was holding Monica's hand, walked forward slowly. Throughout their journey, camera lights flashed nonstop. God, Martin looks so handsome in that outfit today. He has been in the industry for ten years, yet his looks are still so attractive, elegant, and noble. Oh, God! The other male artists that had debuted in the same year as him couldn't even stand the test of time. Some have become disabled and some have aged. He's the only one who still looks so fresh. Oh, what did time leave on him? Huh? Who is that woman beside him? I've never seen her before. Oh, God. See that woman holding on to him? Oh, she's so beautiful. More beautiful than Christina Markle, even. Someone with keen eyes spotted Monica beside Martin and marveled at her beauty. Thereafter, all the reporters consecutively shifted their attention to her. Monica, who was wearing a graceful white evening gown, came off as a beautiful goddess. Unlike Christina's carefully crafted, glamorous facial features, she was effortlessly beautiful. She seemed like heaven's masterpiece with her extraordinary looks. Her looks were refined. The black and white of her eyes were vividly separated, expressive irises that matched her attractive appearance. Her nose bridge was high, her lips were red, and her teeth were pearly white. When she smiled, it was as if all living things on heaven and earth were drained of colors. White suited her very much. Her smooth skin was so delicate and fair that she strongly resembled a jade doll outrageously refined. At this moment, with the snow-white gown on her, her elegance was more apparent. Standing next to Martin, she was not overshadowed, and was in fact extremely compatible with him. Their every action was done with indescribable grace. Monica, in fact, overwhelmed everyone with her presence alone. Her poise was just right. A beauty like Christina even became her backdrop. Oh, gosh, she's like a fairy. The air around her, how can it be so ethereal? You can't compare her to others. If Christina were to stand next to her, she would be unable to hold her front. Even if it were Pamela Smith, she would also be unable to compare. Who is this woman? Why haven't I seen her before? Who was she? Almost everyone had the same question. Many famous directors and producers were at the venue, including high-profile individuals, and all of them were astonished and stood rooted to the ground as they observed her. Beauties were a dime a dozen in the entertainment industry, but none of them was comparable to Monica. Just elegant and ethereal, truly ethereal, without a tinge of tackiness. She and Martin together were like an incomparably beautiful oil painting. Martin frequented movie festivals, but he rarely had a female partner. Since Monica was a newbie who had yet to debut, the surrounding people could only speculate about her identity. Hearing the discussion of the entertainment reporters, Christina nearly flew into a rage. What were they thinking? They actually compared her to an inexperienced newbie. Did they not have good taste? She dressed herself up so meticulously and attended the event in glamour. But the limelight was easily stolen from her by a newbie whom these people did not even know the name of. Christina bit her lips in hatred and locked her eyes on Monica.
Episode 74, Clear Skies and Fine Sceneries, Part 2. If Ice could kill, then Monica would already be shredded into a thousand pieces. Damn it. Martin, is this your female partner? One of the many entertainment reporters asked in surprise. Martin grinned and nodded. What's your name? Is it okay if you tell us? He lowered his eyes to Monica and sent her a signal with that. Feeling a little nervous, she blushed lightly. Fortunately, she had nice makeup applied on as it covered any of her tizzies or worries. This was her first ever red carpet walk, and she already had to be under these many reporters' cameras. This occasion was no less inferior to any global movie festival. Her appearance was already extremely eye-catching. Her lips curved into a charming smile, and her lovely voice reached their ears like a spring breeze. Friends from the media, good evening. I'm Monica Thames. She paused for a while before continuing with a radiant smile. Clear skies and fine scenery. Monica was always a detailed person, and even for her name's meaning, she was very particular about it. The reporters were mesmerized by her voice, which was akin to a passing light breeze. Compared to the self-introduction of fresh female stars, Monica was more reserved and conservative. Some recalled when Christina first viewed it. It was during the launching ceremony of the first shooting of her movie. Her self-introduction was quite simple, yet brute. In that instant, Christina's poor level of education and immaturity were once more distastefully made apparent to these entertainment reporters. Thus, with Christina serving as a foil, the reporters developed a rather good and deeper impression of Monica. However, some reporters still had questions. This newbie is so pretty. She has yet to debut, but she's already walking the red carpet with Martin. Did she pull off any shenanigans? What's her background like? Precisely. On what grounds is she able to walk the red carpet with him? Her background is unknown. Since the handsome Martin is known for his coldness and high status, this newbie probably has a strong backer. Her beauty is also a strength. Look at her. Her face is so delicate. It seems water can be squeezed from it with a pinch. She even looks way better than those who have gone under the knife. I recognize her now. She's that auditionee who left the judges with a great impression on the last day of auditioning for The Forbidden Love. I was there at that time and saw her amazing performance, too. I heard that the well-known director, Jane Scott, was so impressed with her. Oh, so it's her. I heard that the movie's directors originally wanted to cast Pamela Smith for the female role. But Jane Scott didn't like her rigid acting and strongly voiced his support for a newbie instead. Rumor has it that he even announced his intention to discontinue filming the movie himself if another person is cast for the role, and then walked out of the audition site causing the assistant director to lead the entire crew into bringing him back. James is stubborn as always. The newbie he has his eyes on must be very outstanding. Isn't it so? He was practically beaming with joy that day and decided the female lead on the spot without much consideration. The reporters gossiped with one another about it. Once everyone heard that Monica was the female lead personally handpicked by James Scott, they took another look at her with increased admiration. James was known for his strictness and meticulousness with work. He was harsh and was nearly apathetic. He made sure to be involved with everything, even if it was role selection, shooting, post-editing, or even processing. At the set, he was famous for being stringent. His words were final, and no meant no. Everything had to be redone if it was not executed satisfactorily. A problem with a scene or an emotion, and the entire crew had to shoot everything again. Christina was inexperienced when she first participated in his production. Her portrayal of the given role was weak and lacking. For a scene in the rain, she stumbled and made many errors in her lines. James was so enraged, he berated her. Half a night was spent for that one scene. Thus, Christina held him in reverence. She had never been in any of his movies again, even when she rose to stardom. What a monster! Claire, who had already made her entrance, was curious of the craze among the reporters. She turned to see what it was, 
and spotted an unfamiliar face. Another newbie. She knew nothing, but came in such a grand fashion, nonetheless. She had yet to debut, but already wanted to surprise her seniors. She was this ambitious now, so what about in the future? Feeling threatened by the newbie, she sneered. Why are the standards for this year's gala set so low? Stella chimed in. Exactly. What's newbie anyway? Emma, who had successfully entered the venue with Charlie, also heard the commotion behind her. Continuous flashes of cameras made the entire venue as bright as day. She looked over her shoulder in astonishment. Who was putting on such a big show? So many entertainment reporters were clamoring. When she saw that the person was Monica, she was so shocked and inhaled a chilling breath. The person was her. She originally thought her sister would be at her wit's end from worrying over the missing gown. But never did she expect the latter to wear a more expensive gown than hers to the event. Monica's level was much higher than Emma's. She even appeared at this event as Martin's female partner. Once she made her entrance, even Christina's presence was overshadowed. One must know that Claire's status could not be compared to that of Christina's. Damn it. Your sister is here. Charlie, by her side, stared at Monica with excitement. She was so dazzling tonight, he almost lost his will to move his eyes away from her. The thought of being able to enjoy the two sisters' services tonight made his Adam's apple bobble heavily. He could hardly wait. Noting his excitement, Emma was infuriated further. She was so jealous fire almost emitted from her eyes. She bore extreme hatred in her heart. Was Monica really going to fight her for everything? She was not going to let her have her way. This was when she thought of a plan, causing a sinister smile to blossom on her lips. Christina was so furious, she turned livid with rage. The situation was already out of her control, and she could not do anything to steal the other's thunder. With a stiff face, she made her way to the venue's entrance. However, when she reached the entrance, no one was accompanying her. Justin did not follow her. Where's that man? She twisted her neck in annoyance, only to see the man still standing in the same spot. He seemed to be in a daze as he gazed in Monica's direction. His infatuated expression made her so furious, she almost threw her high heels at him. However, being at such an important event, and under the watchful gazes of the media personnel, audience, socialites, and influential people, it was just not proper to openly express her anger. She could only suppress the flames of fury inside her. Swallowing her anger, she called out, Ahem, Justin, it's time to go in. He was jolted out of his dazedness by her call and turned to see her looking dissatisfied. He felt chagrin over his loss of self-control. Unbeknown to the two, a wayward reporter managed to capture this moment. Nice. The shot is too perfect. I'll use it for tomorrow's breaking news. Famous actress Christina's fine looks at the gala fail to keep boyfriend's eyes. Newcomer receives all the spotlight. The headline is great. It was hype. Martin and Monica made their way to the middle of the venue. Gripping a golden pen, he drew an elegant signature at the center of the signature board. The gala's red carpet event had thus ended. She had many butterflies in her stomach and took several deep breaths in secret. It was just stressful being his female partner. Security was fortunately tight for tonight's gala. Non-attendees, reporters, paparazzis, and staff were not permitted entry, so Martin's fan were kept outside. If this were not the case, she might receive quite a bit of trouble. However, despite the tight security, throughout the red carpet event, she felt uneasy over those envious eyes trained on her. Martin was an excellent idol. Scandals he had were close to none. His usual image was that of an aloof and handsome man, and because of this, several female reporters got smitten with him. However, tonight... The superstar standing next to a newcomer had a gentle smile, which could only appear in movie scenes on his lips, and the crowd was instantly captivated. 
Was this really to make a name for her? This was not to attract haters, was it? The fan base was huge. The thought of it caused Monica to break into a cold sweat. A gentle whisper to her ear from him dispersed her wayward thoughts. Monica? He dipped his head and passed the pen to her. Signed. Huh? I have to as well? Mm Mm-hmm. Of course. You're my female partner and my female lead. She asked with some uneasiness. Where do I sign? Here. He pointed at the blank space below his signature. Her cheeks tinted red. She abashedly signed her name. She had never practiced her signature before. But just like her, her handwriting was very beautiful and graceful. Let's go. His eyes as gentle as Tom Waters, he preferred his hand to her. She pressed her lips together, gave a bashful smile, and then placed her hand to his. He held her hand tightly and did not let go. Her hand was soft and warm, and her skin was as supple as a flower petal. His heart skipped a beat the moment he held her hand. Had there be love at first sight in this world? Many years later, when he recalled the scene again, he felt lonely. He clasped her hand tightly. If he were to go back to this moment, he would hold her hand even tighter. Tighter to the point of never letting go ever again. Anyway, this was a story for another day. In a narrow alley at the back of the event venue, a luxurious Bentley perfectly avoided the sea of reporters and stopped at the VIP entrance. Stefan stepped out of the car indifferently. Coldness and detachment were present in his eyes, as always. Under the retro lighting, and wearing a handmade Armani suit, his tall and lean figure and long and sturdy legs formed the perfect golden ratio. Gracia, who was wearing a purple gown, followed him with sleeping Sam in her arms. There was undescribable grievance in her eyes. She gazed up at the stoic-looking man before her in bitter silence. She bit her lower lip, tears welled up in her eyes. Stefan looked at his wristwatch. His facial expression seemed to be sealed in ice. It was devoid of emotions. Feeling indignant? He leisurely turned to look at her with frigid eyes. Huh? He leisurely turned to look at her with frigid eyes. You'd better know your place. Feeling wrong, she asked back. My place? What is my place, then? The man was still regarding her emotionlessly. I am your fiancé! Your future wife! Tears flowed out from her eyes as she asked with cracked voice. Aren't I? He studied her for a while, and frustration started to stamp from his heart. He had lost some of his patience tonight, so a word of apathy came pouring out of his lips for her. Ugly. She was puzzled. If you still show this face, then disappear from my eyes. World. He had no idea. He was still young back then, and Grandpa Lewis had the highest position within the family. His one word was akin to an imperial decree, and no one dared to disobey. He was all along hardworking and outstanding, and Peter Lewis chose him as his successor simply because he had never let him down and done everything perfectly. He had never allowed himself to show any signs of weakness. In the past 20 years, he had not lived his life as his own. He had no emotion to call him, and solely abided by his grandfather's wishes. His entire life was about following every instruction of Grandmaster Lewis. Very satisfied with his grandson, Mr. Lewis transferred most of Makewell Financial Group's shares under Stefan's name before the latter even reached adulthood. His only request was for him to marry Gracia. He was not in any position to refuse. It was only up to this point that everything was in upheaval because of that woman. When it came to business, Stefan was the elite of the elites. He was ruthless and charismatic. Makewell's financial group held the fate of the financial market. His thirst for conquest was perfectly displayed in this aspect. Right now, he discovered that one woman could equally stir up thirst in him. 
This was especially the case when Monica, with her exceptional beauty, appeared before him tonight. Her every look and smile moved him deeply. With just one look, he was blown away. Her smile was not meant for him, though. His thoughts strayed to that night, six years ago, as he looked at her. She had anxiously lain in the bed, blindfolded. She was fearful and helpless when he arrived, yet still tried to accommodate him with her all. His fingers ran through her hair as he rode in perfect unison with her. He had his thought of keeping her by his side as a little pet. However, soon after, she completely disappeared from his life. Meeting her again was unplanned, and he was unprepared. After their one-night stand, he realized how much his body craved and thirsted for her, but she refused him. She told him before, True love is priceless. She then pointed a finger resolutely to his chest. If you really want it, then use this to exchange for it. Can true love only come with a true heart? Does that mean one can't buy everything with power and money? Still, why is she giving her best smile at that Martin? His heart was in turmoil. Damn, this woman can really stir shit. He turned his back and refused to look at her again. He proceeded to coolly instruct the nanny. Bring Sam upstairs. Yes. The nanny quickly took the little lad from Gracia as he strode off without looking backward. Gracia watched his departing back with a cold heart. Up until now, the man's heart had never beat for her. She could not control the overwhelming pain and jealousy, as well as hatred, welling up from within her heart. Monica, are you really a vixen who can steal a man's heart? You only have a pretty face, right? If your face is destroyed, can you still tempt men? The gala tonight will be your night of destruction. You just wait. Gracia clenched her lips as she burst. Monica, go to hell. Inside the dining hall, Monica stopped walking and looked around physically when she heard someone call her name. Martin was ambushed by the media once they entered the hall. All the camera lenses and shutters were aimed in his direction as the reporters clamored to be the first to interview him. How dangerous. She quickly extricated herself from the media ambush, but she did not reach far before she heard someone call her name. She turned and saw that it was clear. Episode 76 Beauty is also a kind of talent. Claire Winslet Half of the rookies in the entertainment industry had to call her their senior. Even those from the same batch feared and had to show her deference. This was not just because of her popularity with the masses. She had an influential backer. People were wary of her. Monica was slightly perplexed. Why did the woman call out to her when she did not know her personally? As she was wondering about this, Claire and Stella walked up to her. Former snorted audibly, while the latter, who was standing next to her, commented in half jest, Why, is this your first time attending a grand event that you've become tongue-tied in front of a superstar? No. She replied sweetly. Why aren't you addressing Claire, then? Stella rolled her eyes. These ladies aren't here with good intentions, huh? She smiled and humbly replied, That's because Claire looks stunning tonight in this beautiful gown. She looks way better in person than on screen. Hearing this, Claire happily accepted the praise. She eyed Monica properly for the first time. You're a newbie, but seems to take well to grand occasions. You were sweet with your words, too. <laughs> Bootlicker. Stella was bent on stirring conflict, as she added sarcastically. Monica was not flustered when she heard that. Instead, she smilingly asked, It is since your compliment to Claire. She really looks radiant in her dress tonight. Did Stella not agree with my assessment? Claire gave Stella a warning look from her peripheral view. The latter rushed to clarify, Nonsense! Are you trying to cause a rift between us? Monica gently replied, I won't dare do that. Claire is an excellent actress, and Stella has great acting skills too. You two are as close as sisters. How can I cause a rift between you two? Still, 
I must say that Stella is also up for the challenge tonight with your splendid appearance. She was subtly hinting that Stella was equally dressed to kill, so she could fight with Claire for the attention. The two were under the same manager and company. Both became famous after acting in a drama series and were currently highly sought after. Though Claire was more famous than Stella, she was often compared to the latter, and that had been making her quite unhappy lately. Stella was also frustrated with the constant comparison. The two put so much effort into dressing up for tonight's gala with the underlying intention of stealing each other's thunder. However, both ended up looking almost the same. How can you compare with Claire? I'm behind her in terms of quality and experience. That goes without saying. Claire ignored her words and said, You are called Monica Thames, right? Yes. How did Claire know of my name? She was puzzled. She smiled insincerely. I heard about you when you got the female lead role in The Forbidden Love. Congrats. She sounded like a sour grape. Monica suddenly recalled some gossip Drake had shared with her earlier. Apparently, the female lead was already predetermined, despite the audition. The list of favorites included Claire. Unfortunately, she was deemed too old for the role by James. Getting disqualified due to her age was actually not fair to Claire. At 25, she was not much older than the 24-year-old Monica. However, the deciding factor was that the latter looked much younger than her age and looked the part of a naive schoolgirl in uniform. How could Claire compare? In this way, beauty was also a kind of talent. Claire was rather vain. She believed that the only one capable of snatching the role from her was Pamela Smith. That would be acceptable, as the latter had a higher reputation and more resources. Thus, when she learned that she had lost to a rookie with no track record, she was displeased. When she found out that Monica would be at tonight's gala, she decided to check her out. In the end, she had nothing to criticize about this newbie. She also realized why James had insisted on this girl to have the female lead role. Monica in her white gown seemed to have just stepped out of that teen novel. She even agreed with the director's choice to cast Monica as Diana Stark. Monica could suss out the hostility in her words. She smilingly replied, It's so kind of James to give me the role. Monica is nervous about it too. <laughs> nervous? Claire laughed sarcastically. You need not be nervous. The entertainment industry isn't as simple as you think. You can't make it big on looks alone. Looks without skills will only lead to elimination sooner or later. Monica was unperturbed and maintained her smile. Thank you for your kind advice, Claire. Monica will keep your words in mind. Claire, there you are. Edward walked over with a wine glass in his hand. He was dumbstruck by the sheer beauty of Monica, who was standing with a smile before Claire. Monica Thames? He had heard of her name before. He was among the first few candidates to be considered for the male lead role in The Forbidden Love. In the end, he was given a supporting role. Acting in this teen movie would help enhance his idol image. Besides, this film was going to be directed by the great James Scott. He would accept any role, even a cameo in it. If this were just an average movie, he would reject the role as a second fiddle. He had already seen Monica's audition photo, but was still snood by her in person. She was radiantly beautiful. Are you Monica Thames? He could not hide the admiration in his eyes. Yes. How do you know? She affirmed with a smile. Inside, she was awkwardly deliberating over the identity of the man. She barely followed the entertainment news and often confused the names of artists. Edward was a relatively new actor, so it was hardly surprising for her not to have heard of him yet. Emma entered the venue with Charlie and eagerly followed him to meet a few directors. One had even directed a film that was nominated for the Oscars. This was her first time seeing such splendor and was grateful to the man, despite him forbidding her to speak at all. It seems he has a lot of connections. If he introduces me to one of the directors here, Getting famous is just a matter of time. She was feeling excited and elated. This was when he pulled her to the side and asked, Where is your sister? Ah! Oh. She clasped her mouth in alarm. 
She had almost forgotten about this. He looked at her warningly. You'd better not forget what I've instructed you earlier. No, I didn't. I was just... Don't you worry. You'll get an appropriate reward, as long as you give me what I want. He was getting impatient. She nodded readily. She scanned the crowd and spotted her adopted sister. Charlie, my sister is over there. Let's go. He picked up a glass of alcohol from the counter. Corners of his mouth evoked a touch of evilness as he walked toward Monica. Episode 77 You don't deserve them. Sis, you're here! Edward was chatting happily with Monica when someone suddenly interrupted their conversation. Monica was startled to hear Emma's excited voice. She saw the latter approaching her with Charlie and frowned. Her wrist that was holding a wine glass stiffened a little. Emma? Why is she here? However, when she saw Emma's elegant evening gown and the Harry Winston necklace, she immediately understood. Her gown and jewelry were stolen by her adoptive sister. Feeling utterly disappointed with her adoptive sister, she pursed her lips in anger. She had always had a kind of sharing nature toward Emma, despite the latter not being her biological sister. Since young, clothes or jewelry, the best was always reserved for her younger sister. In university, she splurred on the latest fad, an Apple iPhone, for her sister, with the money she had painstakingly saved from working as a part-timer for two months, simply because the latter had asked her for it. However, despite her loving and pampering, her sister had tried to do her in time and again. Now, she even resorted to stealing her important things. She curled her fingers into a fist as she resolved not to condone her adoptive sister's behavior. She had always forgiven her sister in the past for the sake of their father. Now, she would not be so kind. Claire looked in the direction of the person who had called Monica and saw Emma, the newbie she detested. Emma also spotted her. She almost cowered in fear, but then she remembered that Charlie was with her now. With that, she snuggled his arm with apparent conceit as they walked up to the group. Claire could not help but sneer at her cockiness. What a hypocrite. Stella shuddered at the sight of Charlie, and she whispered to Claire, Isn't that the girl who stole your thunder earlier? She's his partner after all. No wonder she's so arrogant. Bitch. Claire looked at Emma with despise. Emma, with Charlie beside her, was no longer afraid of her, though. The only thing in her mind was how to make her sister take the drink that had been drugged. She did not care about the rest. Claire became more upset when she was ignored and decided to teach the newbie a lesson. As Emma was walking past her, she suddenly stuck out her foot under the cover of her long gown. Emma missed this little action as she approached Monica. She was still holding her head high, when she tumbled forward due to getting tripped by Claire's outstretched foot. <laughs> Emma let loose a scream. Actions entangled. Edward managed to catch the falling Emma in time, but he failed to balance the wine glass in his hand. The glass of red wine flew and landed on Monica without warning. Splatter! The red liquid splashed on her beautiful white gown embarrassingly. Monica frowned at Claire. She had seen her furtive action from where she stood. Claire saw her look and snickered. She knew that Monica could not do anything about it, even if she was caught in action. Charlie, as well as Stella and Edward, was flabbergasted at this unexpected turn of events. One after another, guests crowded at the scene, bustling with curiosity. The media hounds were drawn to the commotion, too. The atmosphere was tense. Many of them wanted to see Monica make a fool of herself. Emma with her ashen face, carefully opened her eyes to look. Monica was staring at her, a chilly expression that she had never seen before. She was taken aback by this. Her adoptive sister was usually sweet and gentle, and would never shoot for such a deadly look. She retreated a step in fear. Sis, splatter. Before she could regain her composure, an expressionless Monica went up to her, and with a tilt of her wrist, poured the wine in her glass on Emma's head. Drip. Cold liquid drenched her. 
child let out a gasp at the spectacle. Emma was caught off guard when her normally meek and weak sister retaliated by drowning her with wine in front of everyone. She jerked her head toward her sister, who was staring at her with icy eyes. You! What the hell are you doing? She then marched up to Monica, her hand up, threatening to slap her. However, before her palm could land on her sister, someone caught her wrist tightly. With her eyes fuming in anger, she turned to see who had restrained her. Mart Martin? It was Martin Lee who had stopped her. Emma widened her eyes in surprise. Her fury simmered in his presence. Martin was her idol and the man of her dreams. She had to rein in her temper, or at least pretend to be meek and well-behaved, lest she leave some of that impression of her. She withdrew her hand and looked timidly at him. Realizing how embarrassing she looked right now, a spade of hatred sprang in her heart for her sister. So because of her, she shamed me before all these people and my idol. She cursed Monica under her breath as she gushed at him. Martin, how do you do? I'm Emma Thames. I'm... I'm your fan. I like you a lot. You've always been my idol. She smiled at him, only to see Martin frostily eye her dress and necklace. Martin? Emma held her arms in shame. She was wet from head to toe in utter embarrassment. She put on a pitiful and wronged look. I'm sorry that you have to see me in such an embarrassing situation. Moving closer, he grabbed the necklace on her neck and gently held it as his eyes narrowed dangerously. How dirty. Yes, I look a mess. I, I don't have another gown to change into, though. What should I do? She asked pitifully, mistaking his sympathy words. He looked her straight in the eyes. With his handsome face contorting with censure, he ordered, jeeringly, Take them off. What? She was partly alarmed and partly abashed. What's that for, Martin? What do you mean by take them off? I want you to take off that dress and necklace now. He looked at her with disgust, as if she were a scanty worm crawling in a drain. It's because you don't deserve them. Episode 78, History Repeats Itself. It's because you don't deserve them. With that, he strode over to Monica and covered her with his outer coat. Monica thanked him quietly. Despite the mess on her, she still looked ethereal. He felt a pinch of pain as he looked at her. He should have known that she would inadvertently step on the toes of many seniors as a newcomer in this grand occasion. Women were prone to jealousy, especially in the entertainment industry. He knew it was full of ugly competitions and bitter catfights, yet he did not protect her well. Sorry, I didn't take proper care of you. He frowned in self-chastisement. I should have made sure to stay by your side at all times in this gala. She was surprised by his words. Nonetheless, she gently consoled him. I'm fine. You don't have to blame yourself. He gently squeezed her shoulders, drew her slowly into his embrace, and whispered to her ear, I'm not leaving you again. I won't leave you, and won't allow anyone to bully you again. She was unable to hide her surprise, as she stared at him. She lifted her blushing face, and acknowledged his promise with a smile. Thank you. Monica's calmness throughout the whole incident disappointed Claire, that was waiting for her to commit a social faux pas. In fact, not only did she miss the chance to laugh at her, she even witnessed Martin treating her with loving tenderness. This left a bitter taste in Claire's mouth. The crowd around them started whispering to one another, Why is Martin so protective of this newbie? Who is she, exactly? That's right. He treated me aloofly and coldly when I co-starred with him. Why is his treatment of this newbie so different? She's someone important? She must have a big shot as her sugar daddy. So even Martin has to flatter to her. Claire, who was already feeling very displeased, turned to face those gossipers and viciously snapped, Shut your trap! On Emma's end, she was unable to grasp the meaning behind his words 
and stupidly assumed that she was concerned for her. He treated her coldly and disdainfully, though. She did not deserve them? What did she not deserve? She could not understand. Emma, with her pitiful and trembling voice, asked, Mr. Martin, what do you mean by that? What am I not deserving of? She then scanned the crowd like a scared kitten and lamented with tears. Why are you bullying me? I may be a rookie, but that doesn't mean you can treat me this way. She crossed her arms and held her sleeves tightly. The way she looked, with her moist and grievous eyes, trembled in fear and embarrassment. To move anyone's heart, especially men's, they would usually rouse their protective streak. Edward expectedly took pity on her. He did not notice Claire's evil deed earlier, but he could tell that Emma's fall was unintentional. If that was acting, her acting skills would be superb. Despite it being unintentional, Monica did not wait for an apology, and instead retaliated by doing the same thing to the unnerved Emma. That was just unkind. He slowly walked over to Emma. Following Martin's example, he gentlemanly covered her with his outer coat. Emma was surprised and touched by this gesture. She smiled gratefully through her tears. Edward, thank you. Come dry your tears. Your makeup is going to be ruined, he kindly reminded her. She hung onto his shirt cuff as if he were the last straw of hope. She implored, That's unintentional. Please believe me. I really didn't do it on purpose. He nodded seriously. Yes, I saw that it's really unintentional. He then turned to Monica with a reproachful look. She didn't do it on purpose, yet you drenched her with your wine. Don't you think your action is a little vicious? She raised an eyebrow in mock surprise. Oh, I'm vicious? Stella, who was standing at one side, added to Edward's defense. Monica, this is too much. Do you think you can get away with it just because you are given preferential treatment? You're such a bully. Martin grimaced at their charge and turned to Monica, who sat in his arms, looking calm and composed. He was ready to confront them when she intervened. I'm not a bully she said quietly, holding on to his arm. Edward was not convinced. Then why did you do this to her? That's correct. What were you thinking when you did that to her? You're probably trying to make her look bad. Huh. Isn't the pot calling the kettle bat? Both rookies are dressed to kill tonight. Such arrogance. Someone viciously commented from the side. I agree. She must have done something to make Martin be taken with her. I heard James look highly to her, too. I wonder if the two of them have something going on. On the second floor, Stefan was observing the spectacle below from behind the banister with condescension. His eyes, cold and stern, were locked on to Monica. His grip on the banister tightened when he saw Martin held her close in his arms. Gracia was right next to him. Her brows furrowed as she watched the commotion. Thief! An icy voice could be heard from the hall. Monica stared bleakly at Emma and repeated, You are a thief! That accusation jolted Gracia. She stood rooted to the spot as her memories returned to that scene in the orphanage fifteen years ago. The past was reenacting before her now. At that time, the children in the orphanage sided with her as she haughtily and heartlessly accused Monica. Alan is a thief! This was history repeating itself. She took an unsettling step backward as guilt flooded her from the inside. I'm not a thief. Gracia, slightly trembling, held her arms across her shoulders. Her face was grave and serious. Stefan turned and looked at her, expressionless. Her eyes were bleak as she was caught up with the nightmare recessing in her memory. In the center of the hall, Emma tried to deny unconvincingly I'm not a thief. Her face was wan with fright and alarm as her step faltered. You took my necklace and my evening gown, yet you dared claim that you're not a thief? Monica shot her adoptive sister a dirty look. Isn't that called stealing? No, that's nonsense. I'm not a thief. Emma was still desperately trying to deny everything. Her adoptive sister tilted her head in a half jest. Are you calling this a slander, then?
Episode 79, The Truth is Out. Are you calling this a slander, then? Emma started to panic. She did not expect her sister to expose her in public. Monica always doted and pampered her on her father's account. Her adoptive sister had never once complained about their suffering in her and her mother's hands. Her sister was meek and full of endurance, so she did not expect her to publicly humiliate her like this. However, Monica just did the unthinkable. Admit to thieving? How could she do that? She had yet to debut in any show. If she admitted to stealing, how could she survive in the show business from then on? Edward, who was oblivious to the truth, tried to defend Emma. You accusing her of being a thief? But where is your proof? Proof? Stella warned forebodingly. Monica, you'd better be careful with your next words. If you're found slandering, there will be serious repercussions. Monica was bemused. Lifting an eyebrow, she smilingly said, That is an expensive gown. Coupled with the necklace on her neck, she's wearing an outfit that is worth over a few million. They're just too expensive. She paused and then continued casually. If this matter is turned over to the police for investigation, and due to the massive loss reported afterward, the punishment will be life imprisonment in accordance to the state regulation for cases involving millions or more. Life imprisonment? Emma was truly shocked to hear that. Was her adoptive sister sending her to jail? I don't want to go to jail. She greatly regretted her action earlier at home and quickly tried to cover up. No, I'm not a thief. I I'm not. I'm not. Compared to Monica's strong and rational arguments, Emma's defense sounded lame. Forced into a corner by her sister, she was steadily losing her footing. She looks guilty while her sister looks confident, right? Did she really steal? Look at that face. She seems to be flushing with guilt. She must be feeling guilty after being cornered. The surrounding people whispered and pointed their fingers at the two sisters. Edward was about to rebuke when Claire pulled him to her side, chiding, Why are you getting involved? Why? Right. She cut him off with a harsh reprimand. She quiet. Don't invite trouble. Emma was still trying to find excuses, but they sounded lame, even to her ears. Martin sneered. Emma, who gave you that Harry Winston necklace? I bought it myself, she cautiously replied. You bought that? Claire found her claim comical and jeered without hesitation. Do you know that this necklace is worth a few thousand million? Can you afford it? Emma despaired when she heard the price. No, no, I bought the gown. The necklace was a gift. Oh, who gave you this gift then? Even Stella found her story suspicious. This is a limited edition and one and only in the world. Even gauging its actual price is a bit difficult. Who gave this to you? Emma helplessly looked at Charlie, but the latter coolly averted his gaze. Martin frigidly replied, That necklace belongs to me. Everyone was shocked to hear that. He continued further. There is a warranty card for every piece in the Harry Winston series. I have it. Do you? I... I don't have... Emma was paralyzed with shock, trembling and collapsing to the ground defenselessly. Edward was also shocked to learn the truth. Did Emma really steal her sister's clothes and jewelry? She looked so innocent and believable just then. So he took her side. Stella despised. A thief is a thief. You were so low-handed. Emma bit her lower lip as she cried to her sister. I didn't do it on purpose. Don't send me to the police. I'll give you everything back, so don't send me to the police. Her disgraceful look was revolting. Stella despised. A thief is a thief. You were so low-handed. She's so low-handed and will do anything to go up. What a disgusting girl. Why did the concierge let her in? Martin glanced at Monica questioningly. Do you want to send her to the police? Emma looked up in horror and tearfully knelt to the ground, begging her sister for mercy. Don't, sis. Don't. 
Don't send me to the police. I won't do this again. No. Monica, with a frigid expression, said after a long silence, I won't send you to the police. Emma sighed in relief. He coldly commanded, Take off the clothes right now and get lost. She turned pale from dismay by his merciless expulsion of her. Did she do all that work just to be expelled this soon? She tried all ways and means to get close to Charlie so that she could get to know the famous directors and producers here. Getting expelled now would waste all her efforts. Why? Why is everyone helping Monica? Why are the heavens so good to her? She did not want to admit defeat now and bit her lower lip in frustration. She thought to herself, not for that accident earlier. Sister would have drunk that glass of wine. Everything would have been set by now. She remembered that her steps were firm and steady, though. Something seemed to have tripped her. Suddenly, she realized something and jerked her head up to look at Claire. The latter was looking at her with loathing, and it hit her there and then. It was no accident earlier. They had secretly messed with me. Stefan's brows twitched a little. With his face shrouded in gloom, he turned to walk away emotionlessly. Emma was quickly booted from the hall to the second floor by the attendants once everything ended. Charlie was very unwilling to give up, but he could only follow her upstairs. Martin told his partner, You can't attend the gala like this. I may as well send you back. Oh. She agreed. She was preparing to leave with him when an attendant called out to her. Excuse me, are you Madame Monica Thames? Feeling astonished, she nodded and asked, Yes, I am. What's the matter? The attendant bowed respectfully and informed, The venue has a dressing room for the VIP. Please follow me to change into another set of clothes. Martin and she exchanged a look of surprise. You go then. I'll wait for you. He smilingly said. The attendant led her along a long corridor. The gala was held at a seven-star hotel, one of the properties under Makewell's financial group. It was one of the famous seven-star hotels in America. This could be seen in the style of the interior carved beams, exquisite frescoes, expensive retro wall lamps. The hotel was next to the sea. Through the beautiful floor-to-ceiling windows, one could see the panoramic view of the sea at night. Here, please. The attendant stopped at the door to one of the suites, respectfully and expertly opened the door, and gestured for her to enter. Thank you. She smiled as she walked into the room. It was pitch black. Under the faint moonlight, she could vaguely make out the room as a luxurious presidential suite. Episode 80 Do you like to flirt around? Under the faint moonlight, Monica could vaguely make out the room as a luxurious and presidential suite. When she entered the room, she made out the lavish decor, rose embellished European arches, and expensive Saxon rugs. There was also a king-size bed for five persons in the suite. A refreshing evening breeze was blowing from the slightly ajar windows, with set crimson curtains fluttering and flipping. Did I enter the wrong room? She hastily turned around and was surprised to find the door locked. She twisted and turned the doorknob to no avail. It would not budge. Is the door locked from the outside? Alarmed, she banged the door hard and shouted for help. Is anybody there? Why is the door locked? Is anyone out there? There was no reply. Silence. Her heart raced fast at being trapped in total darkness. She had serious night blindness. It rendered her incapable of differentiating the directions in the dark. Moving and touching her way around the room, she tried to find the switch. She gave up in the end. The dead silence surrounding her filled her with dread and insecurity. She blindly made her way to the windows and flipped the curtains open, causing the luminous moonlight to filter in. That's when she became aware of something moving behind her. It was as if there were another presence in the room. She held her breath in fear. A series of calm footsteps, which was accompanied by aggression, approached her in the darkness. She was in full alert mode and was about to turn to leave when in the next second, a full hand reached out and effortlessly covered her eyes. Before she could struggle and resist, 
Her hands were held captive. She was easily held captive. Soon after, she felt a towering presence close in on her. And then, her back was pushed onto the cold window pane. She sucked in a deep breath in terror. She could tell that it was a tall and lean man. She only reached up to his chest. As she was preparing to yell in confrontation, the man bent down and blocked her mouth. He launched his attacks in rapid successions, like water released from the dam, and effortlessly prevented her from reacting at all. Deeply embarrassed, she struggled to escape. She yanked her head to look at her attacker, and was stunned on the spot by a pair of seductive and mesmerizing eyes staring back at her. It was nothing. His handsomely sharp features and well-defined contours confronted her eyes under the dim moonlight. This was her first time seeing him up close and personal. His eyes were tilted, long, and narrow, like an almond seed. His eyelashes were thick and long, like the wings of a black phoenix. All these added to his charm. He had a unique scent that was not from a deodorant. It was a scent that could only come from a man. She lost her composure, stared at him, dumbstruck. Her back was on the window pane, which the coldness of could not compare to the chill in his eyes. He looked so regal and proud, just like a mighty tyrant. Their two pairs of eyes locked onto each other. He forcibly hugged her closer, slightly lowered his head, and lightly popped her lips. She faltered involuntarily, but he refused to let her go, drawing her even closer instead. His eerily charming face was so near hers, the tip of their noses touched as he brushed his thin lips lightly against hers. It was a seductive touch that was warm and arousing. He seemed to have taken some wine earlier. His sexy lips felt a faint, aromatic scent, and his intoxicated eyes, which were bewitching, held unspoken meaning. This man was born with a kingly aura. His every look and every move commanded others' submission. She clenched her hands into fists as her entire body shook with fear. On guard against him, her nerves wound into a tight ball. The man's mouth curled into a bemused and haughty smile upon seeing her reaction. His charming smile only put her on defense even more. Phew! In the next moment, she turned quietly and showed a frightened expression. She saw something hot and dangerous flickering in his eyes which he did not bother to conceal. She was deeply alarmed. Not even their warm breath could soothe her uneasiness. You! What do you want? She wearily asked, but he kept quiet. The dead silence was suffocating in the spacious room. She lowered her eyes and looked away. Her body was stiff with fear, like a scared and helpless pig. He reached out and fondled her lips with his slender fingers. Without warning... He grabbed her chin and forced her to look into his eyes. His deep-set eyes, she could see his desire for plunder. She was beginning to grow desperate inside. In the next second, his lips pressed and locked on hers again. She hastily reacted and subconsciously bit his lower lip hard. Flash! Frowned and licked his painfully bitten lip. She took this chance to push him away and dash for the door. It remained tightly shut. Hurried footsteps could be heard from behind her. He was like a predator chasing after a prey. His tall and imposing presence pressed closer and pulled her back by the sleeve as he pressed her against the door. He dwarfed her back with his towering body, which exuded the dangerous scent of a beast. He was prim and proper on other days, but tonight, under the illumination of the night lights, his beastly allure was on full mode and evident. He casually leaned on her frail and thin body, sandwiching her between the door and his broad chest. She cried out in pain as her head forcefully knocked against the door. Following this, her gown was lifted by the man's big palm. Panicking, she broke down and screamed, <coughs> He caught her resisting hands above her head, and with his warm lips touching her sensitive ear, beat her soft earlobe hard. Where are you running to, eh? She could no longer hide her fear. With a crumbling voice, she asked, What do you want from me? What do you think? He grabbed and nudged her flawless chin to his face. 
At this moment, there was rage burning in his eyes. Do you like to flirt around? I don't! Thank you for listening. Please don't forget subscribe. See you on the next episodes.